Well, we're back. Yeah. It's been a while. A week, week or two? Uh, probably about two. Happens. Yeah. Like always. So, <coughs> let's see. What happened since then? Two Champions League games? Or one? And then the league. And then now we're in the international break and majority everybody played. And the other day, who just played the final? No, they haven't played the final yet. It was the semis for the Euros. For the Nations League. A lot's happened. Yeah. Let's get let's get this one out of let's get going with this one. Yeah, which one? Peppy. Oh, for USA? Let's get that one. Let's get that uh, one. What's, going. His, let's what's, tackle his, that. what's his full name? Ricardo Pepe. Ricardo Pepe. He's yeah. only eighteen years old. He's eighteen. Now, do you know anything about him as much? Um all I've known is I think he plays for FC Dallas. There's a lot more. Um but yes. But that's that's probably the gist of what I got from the last um, international game that he had that one was against uh, it wasn't El Salvador it was uh, where he came in and scored yeah who was it again? was it against El Salvador uh, yeah away yeah it was away the last the last qualifying right yeah before yeah. this last this yeah, past yeah. week so that's yeah. that's that's where you saw him that's, that's like where you, I saw and I heard about like, him oh, that's who that is yeah right? and, and I heard about him and just figured out and yeah just did a little bit of backstory to um, see what he was but I haven't heard more anything than more than that, other than so, he just plays there, and that's it. I noticed him. They were like, okay, they were throwing his name out there, and oh, the hat trick, 18-year-old, mm-hmm. Dallas. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, fuck, he's an 18-year-old. I was yeah. like, all right, that's, that's, that's cool. And then he kept, his names kept going. Yeah. Kept scoring. Uh, that game you just said about uh, uh, Salvador. Yeah. He came up, did his thing. This game, the last game from yesterday, uh-huh. against Jamaica, scored two goals. Great, great player. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, he started with the Mexican national uh, youth team. Oh, that is right. There is a picture of that. That's There's a right. I checked. I started there following him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Checked his Instagram went all the way down. Did Wikipedia and all that. I was like, oh shit! I was like, he started with the the Mexican youth national team. Yeah. And the reason why I wanted to start off with this was I was wondering, like, he's. I saw the game. Yeah. I think he's legit a number nine. Yeah. I was watching the way he plays. I was watching where he was. The first half, he was, how do they always say, non-existent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, trying to do what he could. But the second half, the, the guy kind of like just steps up. Yeah. When he needs to. I think yeah. he knows that. And the play that they did it was at the right place at the right time as a nine should be and, and, and able to finish, right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. you got to do. Um, yeah. so I was all right, good for him. Cool, he's 18. He's, he's if he keeps continuing this on the next game, I'm sure he's gonna get up there. Yeah, we were saying a little bit before the podcast, but uh, yeah, I was really surprised. Like, holy shit, like, oh, yeah, he could have been at well, I was like, he could have been at uh, Mexico, yeah. I was like, but then I'm thinking, I was like, well, pff, I mean, they got who they got number nine, they got uh, Raul Jimenez, uh, Funes Moris, yeah, and I don't know where the third one would be. The striker. I don't think Chicharito. I don't, I don't think they're changing Chicharito for Probably sure. Probably not. Anymore. I think he's done. I feel bad. Uh, the guy from America. I forget his name. My dad talks about him all the time. Um, I wouldn't know. I know, but he's number nine. Isn't, isn't uh, is Vega? Uh, he's not a number nine. He's oh, a okay. winger. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay, okay. But I'm talking about a real number nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if it would have been a good idea, because like, I think the way I'm looking at it, I know, I, I know you might not be into it. Uh, dissectly, if that makes sense, yeah. sense. more detail, more detail with USA. Yeah, but the way I'm seeing it, the way I seen the games, and the way I, I hear about the pundits and everything was, uh, they don't have a number nine. They no, don't. They Jersey don't. Osdor was the last guy. Yeah, they don't really have that one. Stewart. What's his name from Germany? Uh, the German. Uh, he plays in Germany. So now he's in, now he's in the English Premier. He's a like redhead guy. Oh, uh, Stewart no, Swagger. Uh, Sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah. Um, he was decent, but he wasn't doing stuff yeah. like this. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the other dude that uh, you said Edgar coached. Um, Columbus Crew. Oh, Paul Zardes. Zardes. Oh, Zardes, 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 Zardes. He's yeah, yeah, number yeah. nine, and he's oh, always he's a, up and down. Zardes, yeah. I mean, I like him. I like Zardes for the yeah. story he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to do stuff like this. And yeah. So I think. This kid is coming in at the right exact time for USA. Oh, yeah. In a sense for himself. Yeah, for himself yeah, yeah, yeah. to be like, hey, you've seen all the other number nines. Yeah. I've been consistent in in, in important games, which yeah. is the qualifying. Yeah. Which I think this game kind of stamped his his front runner to be, hey, like, I don't know who's going to beat this guy. Cause, yeah. and, but again, it's Jamaica and El Salvador, not the best two teams, but then 
then again, like you would say, wasn't like well, dominating. Got, uh, just from seeing a few things, he does have the qualities of going in and being like you said, a nine, yeah. and which is what they're looking for. So it it is good to see because you know the other guys, I I could see what they what they expected from, but they weren't really those form of players. He's just in those in those moments where, or not want to say moments, but he's in the right area as a as a number nine. As a right play, yes, you know? exactly. And I think that's we haven't seen that in so long for yeah. USA. I don't think. Yeah. I can't remember. I mean, uh, Josie Alistair was pretty decent, but yeah. as I'm being more detailed as I get older with with teams, I can see this. So I think, in my opinion, I think he's going to be great. I think he should be a big impactful help. Yeah. Going into this World Cup. Oh yeah. Uh. The the honestly, if he keeps doing this, he's 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 leaving Dallas right away somewhere. Somewhere I'm sure see. he will. Uh he seems to me more like a La Liga type player. Yeah. Uh he's not that aggressive yet where he can like be in the Premier League, but yeah. I'll be surprised if someone picks him up in the Premier League. I yeah, feel I like don't he's think he's more, there yet. I feel he's more in La Liga where there's going to be tactical around him and pass the ball around you, so he can be there. Mm, I would feel honestly his best bet would be in Germany. That too. That's because right. their their, yeah, their right. form of play is their number nines are those like, you know they've they've brought out good strikers and then they eventually move on to somewhere else where they may struggle every little bit of them but at, at least there the focus there is the is the form of play which is that number nine, where La Liga it's been more like kind of how Barca used to play you know touch and pass and this and that and things like that with with not necessarily a nine they play with either two forwards three forwards or you know certain ways where. I think in Germany they're more counter esque in terms of you know getting down the field and then finding that forward right away, and I I would think that'd be his best his best place to develop in and eventually grow out of that and then go to somewhere else because that that's I mean just from the highlights that's kind of what I've noticed that's what I see him as you know I don't see him like as dribbling as much or trying to yeah no, players I, on. Seen that I see this guy just making runs into the box and true, trying to be like right a true there. nine like yeah. a true striker that you need to be yeah, and, yeah. And, and just yeah. So I don't know. I think uh, as I watched them as those I mean, two couple games and the highlights in this last game, I yeah. think uh, again, I think he's going to be a good, impactful player for US. Uh, is it the pieces that are going to put it all together? I don't think so yet. I think USA still has somewhat issues. Yeah. Uh, but again, I every time I see them play, I feel like this coach is kind of trying every single player as much as possible. Yeah. So that's why I. Think I mean, I think the good thing is now is that. Because of what the expectation, not want to say expectation, but what um, what everybody saw with Pulisic, McKinney, Dest, you know, just to name a few, you know, those guys that were all in Europe, everybody's expectation, even myself, and I'm pretty sure yourself, was that these were going to be the guys going. Right. And I'm like, ah, let's not even look at the MLS guys anymore. Like, nobody even cares about them. Like, why should we even look at them? But um, it, it actually is good to the fact that that's what they thought of, and in the sense kind of good that they didn't rely on them because then they brought in the MLS guys. And I'm kind of glad that that happened. I'm kind of glad that, you know, if these guys, you know, saw it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever they saw where they probably saw comments of like, ah, no one cares about the MLS now because you got these guys over here in Europe. I'm glad that they, like I said, if they saw that and it pushed them to try to be better, I'm glad that happened because that's what was needed. We, like, we can't just say, okay, let's rely on Pulisic McCain because, if there's nobody behind them to the level of what they can be, then that's where they're going to struggle. Because, you know, we got a couple years away, uh, next year now, right? I would believe next about year. 18 months. Yeah. So, yeah, Cup. about a year and a half or so, you know, a little over a year to the next World Cup. And we can't we can't say that the, the starting 11, which is, we'll just say is all European players, are going to be as reliable then as they are now in the sense. Because anything can happen. And the good thing is that these guys over here are kind of pushing, which is the MLS guys like Pedri and a couple of others that have kind of stepped up from the MLS side and made their case and made their point of saying, hey, look, look at us too. We we, we should have a chance also because they're now pushing for themselves to be part of that, which, which is great, like I said, because even before it was like, you know, they were just picking MLS players, but it's like, this is all we have, you know, like we the guys behind them, they're like, I'm going to make it anyways. Or the guys that are there, it's like, hey, who else are they going to pick? There's nobody else behind me that's really as good as what I can be. Because I, I remember going to a few things and, and talking to coaches. Like, how is it that our left back is DeMarcus Beasley still after like eight years? Yeah, seriously. It's like we can't find a single left back throughout the entire country to replace DeMarcus Beasley, who was a forward for us for like six years. Yeah. So 
it's good to it is refreshing to see that they finally kind of okay we pushed those guys out to the euros and pushed them to be you know developed there now over here back at home guys are seeing that it's like i want to be better than that Mm -hmm. i want to push further than that guy and it's great because like now you see like pedri you see the i I think there's a guy named um daryl or something his name is pepe pepe sorry because you're thinking of uh, the the spain Spain guy. guy um you're right uh pepe um, and then there's another striker at Orlando City that that was uh, he loaned out at uh, he was loaned out and they think in the second division in in England the Daryl guy I think his name's Daryl, black guy, B- big forward looks oh, like Lukaku. Yeah, uh, yeah, he played, but that's where I was. That's so kind there's of, but there's guys like that like him and there's a couple of others that you know that that, that, f- that stepped up from the MLS that are now like I want to say the caliber of them but at least are are competing for them and competing for those spots and competing with those guys to push themselves and be like. I want to. I want to go to the World Cup too now. Like I want to get there, so I'm gonna push even more to try to be on that roster, which is great. Like I said, it's it's a good problem to have for the coach now. You know, yes, yeah. he's he's using yeah. everybody. He's using everybody, and and the the beauty of this is that everybody is taking their opportunities and trying to go for it. Because before it was just like, oh, look at this. who these guys ain't gonna make it. This guy ain't gonna make it. Like we just needed players because the better guys are in season right now. We can't use them. But now it's like I don't think was Poli- I don't know if Pulisic. No, he was injured. He's injured. So before then, or when Pulisic was making his name, it was like, I, I remember he was the face. Nobody cared about Michael Bradley anymore. Nobody cared about, you know, the other guys and, or um, Altidore and, and a couple of others. Nobody cared about those guys. Everybody's, everybody's eyes were on Pulisic and what's he going to do in this game. Now it's like, well, Pulisic's not here, but look at all these other guys. Everyone else is stepping up. Everybody else <laughs> pushing in now. So it's like, I'm not saying like, obviously Pulisic is not going to get there, but it's like, if, if, Let's just say World Cup was next month and he's injured. It's like, yeah, he misses out on opportunity. But the team looks pretty well enough established where it's like, okay, we at least have other options if this happens. Whereas before, it's like, damn, we lose Pulisic. Like, who do we put? And it was the same. Like I said, well, Demarcus Beasley, a 33, 34-year-old left back, was the only one out of the entire country. We couldn't find a 25-year-old, a 26-year-old, a 28-year-old. We couldn't find a single one. To replace this guy, and he was the only one. So now it's and that. Luckily, that's not the case now. Now it's becoming more like the uh, Pepe and you know McKenney and all these other guys. Even some MLS players that I'm noticing. I'm like, okay, good. These guys are now pushing to be better than the guys that are in Euros, which is what we what what we should be seeing in an organization, you know, like this as as it is with all the Euros. We see all like uh, France, you know, we, they've had players uh, that, that are younger that are coming in and it's like, whoa, where did this guy come from? And now this guy's coming, becoming, uh, um, I guess the best example for France is uh, Kamavinga. Yeah. He, you know, he came in, I think, um, I forget, was it the Euros he was coming in? It was right before the Euros, but they didn't take him. Okay. So yeah, he kind of made a little bit of a name for himself and then he started playing well. And then now, uh, now he's at Madrid and he's pretty doing, doing well. pretty well. So now I'm pretty sure France will consider him in the next, you know, rounds of trying to pick players and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of that, you know. Well, I want to I want to uh, say I know you just mentioned about the US stepping up. <clears throat> and I really have I really have to think I know we talked about it last time and I know you're not a big fan of the turn so most people are not, even the one we have on in front of us. The Nation League. Oh. I think what what helped US the US team is those multiple tournaments. To see those players, to see if they can step step up in a tournament instead yeah. of friendlies, because when U.S. beat Mexico, it was a little, it was a tournament, and I think I'm seeing this, and we'll get to the the Euro one, the uh, the Nations League, because that was even an amazing game that I was watching. Yeah. So I think these tournaments are helping find those players now in the national team because there's more games to be seen. Well, it's like I told you, remember. It was like, I think we said this way, 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 way in the beginning. We were actually talking about the Nations League. I remember I said, it's going to come to the point now where it's the, the, the bigger name guys that, let's just say, don't get to play are going to push now the other guys that before we used to be like, okay, this is your chance. Let's look at you. Eh, it was a friendly game. You Thank you for coming. You know, whatever. That's it. Like Now it's becoming more, all right, this is the big time, man. Either you make it here or you're not going to come yeah, back. Yeah. So... In a way, it's like we said. We were like, "Well, let's see how it goes out. Let's see how it pans out." You know, in the, in the coming years, and I I think it's for me, it's actually panning out pretty well for some. So I think USA out of all, I think out of everybody, probably benefited the most out of this. In from terms, what I saw, yeah, yeah, from, from what, what from what we thought, well, for at least from what I thought of back then. 
the Euro teams, I mean, it's still the same players. It hasn't really been much of a difference where it's like, you know, a young true, guy comes true, in true, and, true. you know, this is his opportunity. I think one team that probably kind of benefited that was uh, Spain, which was with, you know, Padre and a couple of guys, like guys that, you know, playing in, in, in uh, La Liga, things like that. So some teams have benefited. Um, now it's now I think it's the bigger names that are going to have to really hone in and really try to push the ones behind the group that's really here now. So if we want to consider this like the A team and there's a B team behind them, it's like that B team has to really develop, really push, so that they have that 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 uh, ability to move players around. And if one guy gets hurt, we can plug this guy in. Another guy get, we can plug this guy in. And I think some some nations are have fortunately have taken advantage of that, and and it's it's paying off for them in their country or whatever, and and probably within their league. So like, I wouldn't say MLS is oh my god, this monstrosity of a great league now, but now we're seeing the MLS players get involved in this too. Now what there be you're, you're kind of seeing the now in the in the in a, with their nation with their national team now the test I would like to see obviously with the MLS players if they're you know they get picked for that is to go against Belgium to go against France to go against Italy to go against his, those teams and see if they really can compete against those guys yeah. and if they do great that's fantastic that's exactly what we wanted years ago years ago is what we've always been wanting always been asking for so to finally see that it's great. I mean, look, I mean, I think Italy probably benefited the most out of anybody with this because they were a disaster after the last World Cup. Like, Well, they didn't make it. There you go. See, they didn't, they didn't time, make it. Yeah. But since then, with this nation league coming, they've rebuilt, they've brought in, they got in their players, and then they went and go and win the Euros. And they went on an amazing beaten streak, which was not done since the, since the last uh, Spain era team that, you know, oh, that's that right. when they had that era of winning Euro World Cup and Euros. So... It was, and you could see it. So some teams are benefiting from it. Some have, oh, you would say, maybe lacked a little bit, but they're gonna now realize it. It's like, okay, we now we have to reorganize and build a structure from the ground up in terms of everything. I mean, they've done it. Or they've they've had it already, but I think they were just kind of slacking off on it to think like, eh, we get the talent. We don't really gotta push for anything. But now it's like, uh oh, everyone else around us is starting to build and starting to get better again. We have to push even further now to compete again. So it's great. It, and I, I guess in a, in a way, it, it, it benefited because everyone thought, oh, man, there's too many games. There's too many games. But it's now given everybody else an opportunity that would never probably have a shot. Yeah. And now those guys that didn't have a shot can get looked at. So, I mean, let's say we didn't have Nations League. I don't think Kamavinga would have gotten noticed. Because he's, depends. It, 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 that was what I'm saying. It depends because... Whatever team he's on, wherever he's playing, you know, like certain players like him or like like Pedri with it, the, the the thing was he played every single game and hasn't taken a break and he's still playing like at a hundred percent, like it's insane. So there's players like that that you know were fortunate enough to get an opportunity to play in the Nations League and then you know play in this or play in that and have multiple games where those are the kind of guys that need to be in every single, not necessarily be in every single game, but need in every every possible opportunity given to them to try to show that they should be there because you got to remember too that there's friendly games and it's like you know before it used to be like oh it's just two games hey and they throw in whoever and nobody pays attention nobody watches so it's like that player that that let's say like pedri or pepe either one would have never been recognized if if nobody's really paying attention you know yeah. And, and and it's not becoming the talk of, the, of of Instagram or Facebook and not bringing in the attention. But now because it's a, an actual competitive, you know, environment, the player goes from, eh, it's a friendly, I'm going to half-ass it to, I got to put a show on or or I'm not going to ever co get come back or get called back. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but I think, uh, I think the MLS is going to become like the Brazilian League. Where you have all your like amazing players start in their league, yeah, for like two years, and then they're gonna just go off to the Europe, which isn't. I don't even think is a bad thing. No, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that that's what I'm starting to see. Yeah, I think that league is gonna become that way. I don't think they're ever anytime soon gonna be like, hey, we gotta keep these players yeah. here. I just really think that they're capable of just gonna produce, and the rest of the world are realizing, okay, they have their own league now. This guy's pretty good. It, We're gonna take him. It, it's. I would say yes and no. The only reason why I, I agree with you on that, but the thing I worry with is you got to remember this is America, is they want to keep everything here. They 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 oh, see yeah. the, the the problem because even some have said it like even even some it's like uh, when like McKinney, Pulisic, Des, like uh, those guys were kind of like in the beginning becoming the names. 
they said it like these are players that we shouldn't have lost from the MLS. Yeah, Why we should have kept these guys from the beginning? They should be playing here. Like there's people that are obviously going to think like that and going to say like that. Most of those ones that we just mentioned that you mentioned, all of them that I realized, all the ones that are legit big that came from the from the MLS academy uh-huh. or whatever, end up in Germany. They yeah. can play in Germany. No, 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 no. You, well, no, my point here is, is that, that I was just no, saying no, no, no. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. similar to Brazil. No, I don't Brazil, but, Brazil, but, here, but here's the difference. The Brazilians can play anywhere. But here's the difference. The the difference with Brazil is their their greed is you know they obviously want the money, whereas Americans we have the money we to pay we them. have not only do we have the money, you know they they want to be able to get get the money from them at an older rate as at an older age. So let's just say Pulisic was doing exactly what he did here at Galaxy, and club teams going to come in and get him, he's not gonna go for a million dollars. They're going to try to get him for 40, 50 million and say, we got 40, 50 million. But no, he left at 15. But did anybody get any money out of him? No. Nobody got anything out of him. So that's the problem right here is that, is that they're going to want to try to do that. But if they're going to do that, they have to be aware, they have to be sure that the league is going to be at the standard where it's like, okay, he is playing at a high level enough, well enough that he can, he can get bought from. Uh, an English Premier League team, a German team, or you know La Liga team, because the same happened with Neymar. Neymar was at Santos, seventeen, eighteen, playing tremendously well. They bought him for like eighty million or something like that, like for a lot of money. Dude. And and the thing was, then it's like, well, yeah, that's what Brazil. I guess you could say the Brazilian culture is like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll sell them to you for this. We're gonna. That's that's exactly what we want to do. And. They start as you, as I'm sure as everybody has seen, is like that's where the majority of these Brazilians. Um, players come out of they come out of like you said they come out of their own league they get sold or they get bought from you know there and now they move on and go somewhere else but the thing is is that every time they get sold they always put a tag on them they put an incentive with it it's like okay we're gonna sell him to you for 20 million but if you sell him to another club within eh, four years we get five percent of that sale so they not only have sold him for 20 but let's say he blows up and becomes an 80 a 90 100 million dollar transfer now they get, you know, an extra whatever, five million or ten million, whatever percentage it is that they decide to agree on. So not only did they get the money that they got, they got an extra just for not even having them. <laughs> just for not even having them anymore. They get an extra incentive out of it. So that's what they tend to do. And I'm sure, I'm sure that's what's gonna eventually happen here. Um, I just hope they don't get greedy to the point where it's like, no, we're not getting rid of these guys. We're not gonna, you know, doing this or doing that. Cause there's some that wanna say they there's some that that feel that way that they say they should have never left. MLS, they should have stayed here with us. They should have grown from here and this and that. And we should be having these players playing here for Galaxy and and Houston Dynamo and and New York Red Bulls, you know, and Orlando City. But it's like, yeah. But then again, it's like you you want them to at least start off here and grow, and then eventually get you know bought out from the big you know the big teams. So that way, the big teams can want to can want and come back and say. Oh, we got Pulisic from Galaxy. Well, you know what? Let's go back to Galaxy. Let's see what they got. Or let's go back here. Let's see what they got. Because that's what happens to all the Brazilians. Corinthians, Flamenco, um, Cort- um, Corinthians. Corinthi- oh, no, I just said Corinthians. Corinthians. Uh, Flamenco, Santos. Santos. There's another. There's like, there's like, the yeah, there's like five good. There's like five of them that are usually the ones where you see a lot of the Brazilians come out of. Yeah. Like the general ones. And it's like. They because they come back and look because they took whoever they took okay let's go back maybe they got another one and we can take him, and and I'm sure eventually that will happen, it's just a matter of time of when and who, and r- little by little we're seeing some of them I've seen a lot of the youth ones like seven I'm always seeing a seventeen eighteen or that that was at Dallas or that was at um, Sporting Kansas or that was at you know Portland Timbers that's getting a tryout at you know I don't know like at Frankfurt or a tryout in somewhere in England or somewhere in Ireland, you know, at least like some small clubs and they're getting that opportunity. So at least then that's probably the, the, the spark that's eventually going to turn into something bigger where I, I think if that uh, Pepe kid stays and plays this way for the next two years, I don't doubt he'll probably be maybe the first big transfer out of the MLS. Oh, I think he'll leave right before the World Cup or after it. So that, that just de- depends. So, but yeah, I, but I think I think I don't know who. The, I mean, I'll look it up. But I, I I don't know if there's. I'm sure there's been transfer players that come out. That um, I think they said one of them was probably like the most was like maybe like ten million or twenty million. I don't know. But I I'm pretty sure eventually there's going to be one far bigger 
than any of that. that. You know how they always say, oh, the biggest transfer in La Liga or biggest transfer ever made for the Premier League. You know, I'm pretty sure eventually there's going to be one for MLS. It's just a matter of time. And who? Depends. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to check that right now. I want to see who the biggest... Biggest but transfer. I think, I think I think the MLS, in some senses, don't really need a lot of big names unless it's a certain city. Well, that's what. That would, yeah, that's the same thing. Because like in anything. The, in, the, in, in in the US, you can make capital as long as you have decent product on the field and you can consistently like have it there. Yeah, and it's and it's like economically wealthy for the city. <clears throat> I don't think the US needs like. All the best players here. That doesn't really do much for them if they know how to continue to make money without them. So, the highest they get, well, from what it looks like, I mean, I, this could be, this could be wrong, but I don't. The highest what? The transfer from an MLS player, from an to, MLS player to a European team. That was, I guess, they you bought could, them. Yeah, like they, they like they were, they started them. like. Like they bought them, okay. Like they got them from uh, I don't know, Atlanta United or whatever. Um, it's not an American. So far, it's the the one is the uh, Miguel Al- Almiro, the one that's in Newcastle United. You know who that one is? Newcastle United. He played at uh, uh, he played at Atlanta United. We were just talking about him the other day on the Newcastle team. I think he was the one that set up the pass for the goal against United, the one goal. And you're like, oh, remember that's the guy from Atlanta United. Say that again. Miguel Almiron. I can't remember. I'm sure once you see his face. Oh, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. The Paraguayan. Yeah. How much? Uh, he went for 26 million. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. That's reasonable, but, but that, no, 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 he's not. He's uh, check well, his no, age. Saying, no, no, check his age. No, he's no, no, 24. He's 24. But, and he left the year but, or two ago. But I'm talking about again. I'm talking about an American. I'm not talking about. But, you know what I'm saying? From the MLS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, I guess you could say the next closest, the next, the only American I, as far as I'm looking at was Michael ba- Bradley. Um, that's when he, he was is, 20. He was 26 Michael when this Bradley? happened. Bradley? Yeah, I can't see 26. This kid's 18. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, that's what I'm saying is that eventually there's going to be one. I mean, I could so be, look, I, no. I, I could be looking at this wrong. It says 10 million, but I could be looking at this wrong. I got to, I got to see. I may have to specify my search here a little better. Yeah, because there's players here, but it's like, I don't know if these are. Let me see. What were we trying to get at? My point about is that. Who was the last one that was the most? Yeah, like who was the most out of, I guess, an American to get transferred out of, I don't know, let's just say like, you know, an MLS team, obviously, to an European team. That was like the but most. Are you, talking about, are you talking about generically, like. Like the he, club said, I'm was, paying. I'm gonna know, give he was, you. He was playing for a while. Yeah, and they were not just mm-hmm. like there for a year as a youth and then left. No, no, no. Like he was actually on contract with you know whatever team, and he was playing there. And the club, Real Madrid, came and said, I want this guy. We're gonna give American you American player. Yeah, American was player. It Donovan. He was. He went out on loan. He was never bought. I'm uh, talking about being bought. Being loaned doesn't count. You're just borrowing. One, the one of the goalies, Casey Keller, the other goalie, uh, Tim or Howard. Tim no, Howard, there, there, there was other, maybe like goalie. five. There's three goalies that went over there. I think I have to redefine my search and be a little bit more specific, because I just put like transfer out of. Uh, he did the Christian. <laughs> oh. Let me see. Um, biggest U.S. player. Big. Uh, has to be one of the past guys. That's what I'm trying to see. <laughs> Bot Brian from Brad. MLS. Let me see. Donovan. Let me see if this one shows. Out the door. Oh, um, Dempsey. Let me see if this gives it to me. No, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Nationalities. Okay. This, this should probably be easier if I just do nationalities. Damn. There's too many nationalities. Play selection. Well, yeah, it's uh, it looks like it's Michael Bradley. The ball dude. Yeah, for detailed much? for ten million. Ten mil? He went. But he was twenty six. Right, but see, it's giving me the reverse side. Oh. I'm trying to see because he went to Rome, but I'm trying to see how much. I don't know if he was loaned to Rome, and yeah. then they bought him. I want. I want to see. What are you checking on? It says they left and then joined. What are you checking on? 
Uh, it just says transfer marketing. You do if if you're thinking Michael Bradley, just Wikipedia of him and check his uh his um, oh, okay. tracking. Yeah, but, he, but it's giving it says, me it's giving me other guys. So like for example, like Josie Outsword left Red Bulls and then went to Vidya. But I remember he was at Sunderland, but I don't remember if he was like loaned there. That's what I'm saying. You gotta look at their Wikipedia. Yeah. I know that's giving me the transfer stuff. Yeah, it's giving me transfer. The Wikipedia stuff. sees the years and it says next to it either loan. It's giving uh, me. It just doesn't give you numbers at Wikipedia. But it, yeah. So I'll look into it more, and I'll probably come back with it on the next episode. But, but yeah, even it says it says here like like Tim Howard from the Metro Stars to Man United, he was three point five million. Yeah, then they're not big numbers. So I don't think well, I, if, let's if, say, if let's, I'm looking at this right, and if it was Michael Bradley, let's say it is. Okay, ten mil is not much. The next, well, but the thing is again, it's, it's a, so right here it says he left Roma and went to Toronto. So what it's telling me is that basically. What I could be thinking is that he was loaned out there. They bought him. They they just said, okay, we're going to sign him for whatever was left of the contract that he was at. And then we'll keep him. And then and then eventually Toronto came back and said, oh, we want him back and we're going to buy him. Or Toronto came back and said they want to buy him. So the only one I can see that the, the latest that went from an MLS team to an Euros was Josie Altidore and he went to Verdiat and he went for $8 Because Dempsey was at Spurs. Dempsey was at Fulham. But I don't remember. I, I don't think he was anything... Uh, was there for a while? It was there no, for he a while. was there for a while, but I don't know. I don't know if he was bought out, you know, at a high fee. You know, maybe he was bought out for like a million, and that was it. Because the last one it shows here was that he was bought from Spurs for for Seattle Sounders for nine million. So he was the only loan I see for Michael Bradley. Yeah, was at Austin Villa. Michael okay. Bradley started at Metro Stars in two thousand four, okay. two thousand five, and then went to Hever Hereven. I don't know where that's at. Yeah, and then he went to Borussia. Okay. See, so that's yeah. that's the thing. What I'm saying, we don't know. I think he got bought out from this Heberman team because there doesn't say yeah. loan next to it. That's a team okay. in. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. So he Dutch. So he went to Dutch again. That must have been a small fee. It yeah, because we don't we don't know him about the yeah. time. So the only like so I said, I'm, the only one I could say that was the closest to that would probably be Josie Altador then, that started in MLS and then went to. Well, with this we just I just gave you this one as well. But you're talking about a high fee. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about like, yeah, because you we could say Michael Bradley went from Metro Stars to there before what, like eighty eight hundred thousand dollars. Whereas Josie Altor went from wherever he was to a Euro team for three million. He's obviously he'd be considered the highest one, even though they both left and were bought out. But it's just technically Josie Altor was bought out by so more. Yeah, Red Bulls to Villarreal, you like you said, right? So Red that, Bulls from 2006, 2008, and then then Villarreal Real. that same year, two thousand eight. Yeah. 2011. Okay, so now we think he's probably the highest one then, and then or just check Dempsey, Dempsey because Dempsey's the next one on. Because on I'm just again, I'm just double checking. That yeah. had to be a buy because there's no loan next to this. Yeah, the yeah, loans yeah. after after Is, that he was been loaned everywhere. Yeah, so yeah, almost everywhere. If it doesn't say loan, then obviously it's a buy. It's, so it should be a buy. Said Clint. Dempsey, check Dempsey because Dempsey went to Fulham, but I don't know where he went before that. Clint I don't know where he came for before that. I can't remember the bottom check. I think he was always at like. I could be wrong if he was always at Seattle. I feel like he was somewhere else. He started uh, New England Revolution. Okay. 2006. That's when he left. Okay. 2007 when he went to Fulham. So I'm pretty sure he got bought there. And then he was at Tottenham Hot Spurs for a year. Okay. And then back to the MLS. Hmm. So he's only been on four teams. Let's see. Uh, he was loaned to... Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, he went to Fulham. There you go. Is it, oh, it's right here. He went to Fulham. He went to Fulham. Uh, sorry. He went to Fulham for $3.3 3 When he left Revolution to Fulham, he went for $3.3 3 So, again, I guess the, yeah, the was, highest one. He was pretty young. At this so, time. I guess the highest one would be Josie Altador. Paid? Yeah. Which was how much you said? It was $8 million. To Villarreal. To Villarreal. He would probably be considered the only one at that eight, at like the that. highest value. So eight million. I'm pretty sure this guy will go this for kid, more. Yeah, where the, where the market is, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're talking like even if he's not American or not. Because the next closest to actually do this is uh, this guy named Brian Reynolds, who's 20. He's go. He went to Rome. He got bought out. Uh. He got bought out from FC. Well, actually, he was loaned out, and then he went back to FC Dallas, and then FC Dallas ended, and they, and then Rome bought his fee for seven point four million. 
And then the one that's the recent, most recent one. Him and him and from S from where to where? He went from Dallas to Rome and then he went back to Dallas and then and then and then Rome rebought him. They bought him again. How much? Seven point four million. He's the re- most recent one, I guess you could yeah. say. Him and that Gianluca guy. The guy that went to the, the fancy club with the fancy jerseys, Venezi or whatever in Italy. He's the other one. Say that his name again. I think he said it wrong. Gianluca. Bus- Busio. Busio. His first name is Gianluca. Busio. Oh, it is. You're right, you're right. That's a cool name. I really like that name. Well, he's Italian. He, he's per- yeah, yeah, he had to go to Italy. I mean, come on with but that see, name. He, see, he's, <laughs> he's 19. Yeah. You know, he's still 19. Yeah, he went for 6.6. And then the other one's the Man City goalkeeper. So, okay, the, the average is under 10. Yeah, under 10. So far. Yeah. Because you said Ulster was at 11 or 10? 9. 10. 10. No, Ulster was 8. So, again, the thing is, like, from it looks like, if they want this kid, Pepe, they're going to have to get him at that rate. So, they have to get him now. Yeah. If they're looking at him and say, hey, this guy has something in yeah. so let's get him now at 9 or 10, we're not going to go. Yeah. You know, because... But I get it. If they're, if, but because but they're it, not going to... Hold on. Sorry. I don't think they're going to sell a kid from FC Dallas that, who's not getting paid more than the starter or the guy that's been there for three years. Yeah. They're not going to be like, well, why are you selling him for more if you pay me the most? They're gonna, because they're he's, gonna look because, at because he's, he's the one that's wanted. He's right. the one that's no, no, no. the, the I, attention. I get that, but I think the way the oh, business they're gonna, is working at they're it, gonna I sell, think they're going to uh, it, it, do it how it, it is. It don't matter who's being because paid the most on the team. It does think not about, matter. But you got to think about it because now let's look at just people in general that come out of the MLS like Alfonso Davies, yeah. the, the English guy. How much did you say it was when they bought him? Um... The last one you just said for Butterline? Oh, uh, 24 million. Right, and, but he was he was one of the top two players on that team from yeah. Atlanta United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't like, oh, he just came up this year. No, yeah, so yeah, but I'm, but, but, but like, I'm I don't saying. Think it, I don't think I've seen where like, no, I don't, I, hey, this is a guy's hot shit for a month, but like we got to, he's going to be sold for no. 25 mil. No, 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 no. I, I think at some point eventually they'll raise his fees or whatever, but if, if, if he's, let's just say he has a breakout year this year, I, I think there's. Maybe like a month or two left. Right, I, think he just, I think he just got pulled up this year for, to the full team. I yeah. don't think he started from the beginning no. of the season. So he got pulled up. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. He's so scoring goals. He's okay, scoring goals shit. or whatever. Let's say nobody gets him. Next year, I guess you could say would be would have to be the year for him to really break out and for a club to be like, okay, we're going to come for this guy and get $15 million out of him. Maybe. Actually, it's going to be awkward that year because the the – World Cup is the World be, Cup is gonna be in the fall, so it's like right after the season. Right? Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's it's gonna be one of those. So it, it, I think he'll get. No, I don't think he's gonna get picked up before the World Cup. He's get picked up after. Over. Depends how that he season, will get picked up. Depends after. how that season is again. And that if he gets taken to the World Cup and he plays. Here's the thing: we're doing so many scenarios. If if well, because you think, have to look at it too is that about past players. Look at James. James is a perfect example of what I've always said I'm was trying an to overrated stick to like player. MLS, no, 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 no. I know, like, but I but I'm getting those players in the no, rest of the no, world. No, 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 no. It's way different. The, the, I'm I'm talking. About, I know. I, I know what you're trying to get at here. But what I'm talking about is how mo- majority of players get picked up. Players don't get picked up before the World Cup. Players get picked up after the World Cup and what they do in it, the World Cup. It depends on a special occasion. Mm-hmm. Look at Alfonso Davies. He got picked up after. After what? After everything he's been doing. But he's he even gone to the World Cup. No, but I'm talking about up. I'm talking about players that don't have an opportunity to go like that right away. I'm, Al- Alfonso Davis like, was. I get was the a, dynamics of your call. I'm talking about an MLS player. Yeah. And then being extravagant with Al- Alfonso Davis. But Alfonso Davis was a breed of on his own because that guy was Ridiculous. When's the last like, time you seen an 18 year old at the MLS do this? I know. Alfonso Davis. From the US team. Oh, no, 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 never. Now, in general, in the MLS, you said right. Alfonso Davis. This to me is a second Alfonso Davis yeah. in, from the league. Yeah, yeah. So if, if but again, it, it has to be, he, he has to be very like on top. Like, like I said, he has to be like a freaking high right. so, reel. Because so, that's what, that's so what, what, I'm, what, that's what on, Davis was. Before I lose this thought, sorry, before I lose this thought. What I was going to say earlier when you were talking about um, when we were talking about Pepe earlier, I think if this guy keeps scoring goals, uh, I think Ronaldo told me he's like, oh, he's going he's gonna to outshine Pulisic. I was like, I told him the only way he can do that if this guy doesn't stop, if he just keeps scoring goals, like if he's like our our Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. if he becomes our Ronaldo where he's literally scoring these goals every single game from the yeah. U.S. national team, where it's at a level that everyone's watching and not just the FC Dallas, yeah. This kid would be that exception of like the Alfonso Davies coming out of the MLS, yeah. and that's yeah. what I was trying to trying to put that implement that. Because yeah, but I guess I could see that from yeah. this kid. So I guess far. I guess before you said that, 
I guess my interpretation of it was he's going to get picked up before the World Cup, which I didn't believe because I've seen players, I guess, I, I wouldn't say I've seen players, but there's been players to that, I guess you could say, standard for wherever they were. And then the World Cup was really their only outlet to, you know, perform and get seen by everybody. And when they perform there, then they get picked up. So, like, we could use Ham, I, I like, I'll use Hamas as an example because it will always go after that year and the goal that he made. And then he got picked up by Real Madrid. And everybody's like, well, where the hell was this guy this entire time? And he was at Monaco. He's playing in France. And he probably did well. He just nobody obviously paid attention to it. But we, when he got to the World Cup, then it became I, the thing. I don't and mind. Then, but, it, but it, you know what I'm saying? This might be our, like, first, like, back and forth. I, I don't. I don't mind what you're trying to do with that analogy. It's just we can't compare that to the MLS and these type of players. Because Hamas... Yes, I can. Hold on, no. Because Hamas at Monaco, right? He was at yes, Monaco before yes, the World Cup. Yes. Hamas at Monaco is nowhere near than any of these players in the MLS because it's Monaco no, 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 and you're no. in Europe. But hold on, let me finish. When you, when, you, when you think about Alfonso Davies, this kid literally like broke through the whole yeah. league... Out of nowhere, in a sense, in a league that you're like, wait, whoa, why are you in this league? Yeah. But if yes. you look at a hot mess at a at a Monaco, we're like, okay, we know why you're at Monaco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I get why you're yes. here. You're coming from Colombia, but like, there's a reason you're already here. Yeah. As, as opposed to like, hey, Alfonso Davies, you should have been like at a Monaco, but we never saw you. Yeah. Because you came out of this league. Yeah. So again, it's very tough to do that in this situation because I think, hold on, I think. The players that are already uh, in Europe and shining and get the chance at the World Cup, it's because it's a bigger stage. They're, they're able to get that shine with whatever national team, if it's good or not, mm. is a lot different from what I'm seeing. My, my point of view is a pinpoint of just the MLS because the MLS, to me, is a whole different breed from the rest of the world than the way it conducts, it conducts yes. itself and the way it develops its players. So when I see another Alfonso days or when I see a Pepe, it's like, wait, like this is something like what we talked about. We want we want all these young kids to be in Europe. Yeah. And develop there and be like, hey, here's where you gotta be to shine and develop. Why? Because we believe that this is where football is made. This is how you yes. right. But when yes. we see an outshined one, we're like, whoa, like this is one of the the rare ones like we said before, like, hey, like this kid went through this. He was in the US and he didn't leave yet. But the day he leaves is when the day we find out is the hype that we're seeing. Yeah, no, no, no. So for me, like I said, the only reason why I compare him is because, again, you got to remember that the, the eyes in these leagues, there's more eyes to certain leagues than there is to others. Right. So that's why I said, like, with Hamas and, and, and everything that happened to him, it's like, like I said, he could have been very good where he was at. The, problem, the thing was it was the French League. Who at that time was really paying attention to the French League? Nobody was. None of those teams were very good. Only Europe, but it, but again, it was that that league that was like, if you're not a human highlight reel for whatever league that you're in, that's not has a lot of eyes on, then we could care less about you because not in Europe. Uh, yes, because even in France, I remember during that time period, the only team I really knew that out of France that was like, oh my God, was okay, was Mar was Marseille. That was the only team. PSG was there, yes, but they weren't really. Anything else other than the time where I was like, oh, wasn't, well, wasn't, well, Ronaldo uh, Dino played there. Wasn't wasn't uh, Beckham there when? Yeah, but when, that, uh, but, he, on, when, but uh, he was already retiring. When uh, there was good wasn't players Zlatan there. When he yeah, was, but they were already time? like at the eight. That, but the for, time, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the time when Hamas was probably he was probably there. No, 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 PSG no. was still coming. Barely yeah, coming but it, but at the time you have to remember at the time when that when uh, that league was there. Obviously, well, since it's been there forever, obviously, but I guess you could say. The what you get out of that league was only one team. So again, if you're not a human highlight reel against every team, I can't, I can't so, entirely but, agree with that because we but, we never but, dissected that deep around that time. Well, so we no, don't know what other players left no, and how they left. No, I, I the thing is, like, I don't the know only every reason, single player. But, that but here's the thing: is we can because we've now since since I guess you could say the that 2014 era of that four, that World Cup era, whatever the face. And time was Barcelona and Real Madrid. Right. Because Spain was just on a roll. And we all knew it's basically Barcelona and Real Madrid against the world. That's how we saw right. it. Okay. We didn't care about the French League. English Premier League was still good, whatever, but it wasn't, it was just so diverse. There wasn't really a right, team. Right. 
Um, the Italian league was almost non-existent because nobody even cared about any of that those teams anymore, that other, other than their countries. That's right. what I'm saying. So that's what I mean. But now, now we're starting to see all these other leagues out of nowhere. Like, look, look how big, like we just talked about, how big the Italian league blew up when Ronaldo got there. He turned that whole league around him alone. Now look at the French league. Everybody wants eyes on the French league now because of Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. You know, everybody wants to, to now watch. You could you could do that all you want, but the the fact remains is that in there. the the fact remains is now people actually want to watch that league. English Premier League was always watchable, but it became even more watchable now because Ronaldo came back and everybody wants to see that kind of that story and everything that's going on there. So my point here again is is that like with James, his only I guess you could say opportunity and platform was the World Cup for everyone's eyes to be on him, and he had to do something great. This happened to a lot of players that done well in the World Cup. They get bought by whatever, and then they don't do well anymore because it's like, well, you were only good at the World Cup, and you only really did a couple things, and that was it. Like the one I really yeah, but th- you're still talking about the World Cup, yeah, compared but, to a whole league. Season. No, no, no. But but that's what I'm saying is that there's some teams and some clubs and some players that come out of wherever that their only best chance of getting to the bigger teams is the World Cup, and they have to perform and do well. Like when Thomas Muller. Had that amazing year of scoring. Hold on, you're confusing me. What? Because there's players. Hold on, hold on. A few from the MLS that just went over in big clubs. No, 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 no. I'm talking about some of them. I'm talking about this kid in general because the 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 year's coming close now to the World Cup. So my point here is because you're saying that. Let's backtrack a little. Right. I'm saying that he could leave before the World Cup. And and I'm saying he's probably going to leave after After. if he plays in the World Cup and performs well because. Alfonso Davis, when he left, yes, he's one of those that left obviously during the regular season and really nothing else going on. Right, but Canada the, wasn't that. <coughs> yeah, sorry, Canada wasn't. So his outlet was never gonna be Canada. Canada. His outlet was gonna be I gotta be a human highlight reel in this league and everybody needs to talk about me. Which is what happened. He was there was the one video that he was being shown that was being shown was the one where he basically spins on like on two guys, gets in and scores. And he came off the bench. So after that. He became a human highlight reel, and then then his eyes and then the eyes started to be coming on him, and they got him. So the same that's what I'm saying. The way in order for this kid to do something like that is like kind of how you just mentioned is he's got to score in every single game from here on out, and basically do that. Now, if in order for him to get picked up before the World Cup, yeah, that's where the eyes and everything starts to come and show up. But if he doesn't, then it's like the World Cup has to be his platform for maybe even to get a better opportunity than you know than than what he may probably get before the World Cup. Because there's some players like that. They'll get an offer, they take it, and then they go to the World Cup, and it's like, man, eh, he did okay. Does he, should he really be going to, um, uh, we'll say, uh, Atletico Madrid? Should, should Atletico Madrid really should have gone? He didn't really play. Like, uh, we don't know, you know, that kind of deal. But if he played and did well, then it's like, well, not only Atletico want him, Madrid want him, Barca wants him, United wants him, Liverpool wants him. PSG one, you know, you kind of get more opportunities like that. Like, for example, James, let's just say he had a decent season. I do not think Real Madrid was going to pick that guy up before the World Cup. I don't even think they even knew who the hell he was before the World Cup. After the World Cup, and because he had the best goal of the whole tournament, every damn team wanted him. I get I get most of your your your, I'm talking your, your about, facts I'm, and, the, and the view of it, but now that I'm looking at it back as I'm hearing you, there's been I think, players like I think that. I think I think uh, nowadays more, I feel like more players like can be found quicker than just the. World oh yeah, Cup. yeah, no, 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 but but that's what I'm saying. In the, in the time frame of what it was then, so yeah, it was the World Cup for. I some. get it for. I think it, now yeah, I get it for because some. of how it is. Yeah, I agree with you. He could probably get picked up sooner rather than later well, because what, that was because, my point. Yeah, because of the way the media is so now. That's, that it, that's because it's so point. all over. Yeah, that's, that's my point exactly. Is that I think I'm I probably missed that out. Is that. The part of the way these players are being found are a lot different than it was in yeah. 2014. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I yeah. think I think like you said, media, social media, whatever. However, however, scouts they have now and whatever. I think there's there's it comes to a point. Like I said, if if this kid at 18, uh, by next season at the MLS scores close to 30 goals. Yeah, like close to what what uh, Vela did and that one guy did from United. Close, close. I'm just saying close. I want to see why not he should get picked up before the World Cup. Like, I forgot his name, Ache Ache from Chivas that went to Spain mm-hmm. before the Olympics, which yeah. the Olympics is the Olympics, but yeah, it's yeah, before yeah. a big tournament yeah. for him. But I think it's because they were able to see what he was able to just at least do in a consistent level. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is like, 
like it goes to your point. Yeah, we may not have known who the hell Hamas was before the World Cup, but I get what you were saying. Like, yeah. Oh, because of the eyeballs and there's Messi now, there's Neymar now. I get that point. Yeah. But I think my whole point was now is like I think there's a level where the fact that this guy can shine and you see, you see, you said it before, when Messi scores or wins the Copa America or when Ronaldo wins this, it's all over social media, right? Like they're literally just flooding that whole shit every day, right? Yeah. For at least three days, it just yeah. fucking lingers, and then you're like, yeah. all right, we'll wait for the next game or yeah. something, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that literally floods it. Where literally, where you pick up a phone and the 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 president of whatever team is like, oh, I just stumbled upon it. Who's this kid? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm saying. So I think I, I, the way he's coming in, Pepe. In some sense, it benefits him and it sets him up for success as long as he keeps scoring. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. As long as he keeps keeps scoring. Oh yeah, like I said, I'm not I'm not doubting the kid. It's just, I'm just saying it's that. I, just, I, I guess my point is it's a whole different dynamic yeah. now. Obviously, it's going to be 2022 by the the, the World Cup than 20, 2014. I, I think a big difference. I just now. I just think I guess what I wouldn't want to happen to him is what, what happened. happened to Hamas. I get is that no, what no, you're no, trying no, to get? At? No, 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 no. Because Hamas, Hamas got in and, and he did his thing, but you know, I, I think going to Real Madrid, I, I don't think that really truly helped him because ever since then he never really, for me at least, shown anything yeah, that. Dude, he he ended up with guitar. He didn't, yeah. God. Now when I saw that, I was like, really, man? After everything, that's where you're gonna end up? Like that's. You were like thirty. Yeah, like you, were, you were better off staying at Everton. I mean, the other the, I, the other one that did that mistake was Oscar from Brazil. I, yeah, and the Hulk he did it too. Hulk too. He was decent. Um, real but quick, it, before I, hold on. One before I get things. Yeah. Uh, I saw a post of James and Beckham. Hopefully, he be. Hopefully, he thinks to himself, you know what? I should just fucking go to the MLS. Yeah, because like Qatar 30, 30, 30, that was like I I, if they're gonna pay you a lot and Qatar, great, but at least have some better competition. Yeah, in the MLS here, you know, like yeah, because in Miami where a lot of Col- Colombianos. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, but, but that was my thought. Yeah, but. so I guess what I'm trying to go at is that if he does get an opportunity, that he at at least views his options, and and for me, it's like if he's really gonna play in the World Cup and actually play, I would at least perform there because he's gonna go against the best players you oh, know, yeah, of yeah. all time yeah, and yeah. and if he can actually perform and do well yeah. i feel whatever offers let's say he has it could be those same offers or it might even be they might become better offers after like the value could whatever be, could be, could so be. the one i i always thought that was really gonna do something out of the mls and be like oh man if this guy's go somewhere i actually want to see i actually kind of want to watch him was the guy from atlanta united the, was i think he was the ecuadorian guy the Martinez dude. I think he's Colombian or Ecuadorian or Venezuelan. I can't the remember. Bleacher? Huh? The bleacher? Yeah, the bleach there, the Martinez guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Venezuelan? I think it's from Venezuela. Yeah, but he was in Europe first. Remember we said that before the whole podcast. We He came, he was in Europe. He was in Italy for a little bit. I don't remember. And then he came to the MLS and they just never got him back to Europe. Oh, uh, I'll check. Let me check. Yeah, Martinez, right? Yeah. He does the jump and penalties? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was, he was in Europe? He was in Europe. Oh, I, I think he that. was in a team in Italy, one of the, like, the lower teams. He was there for, I think that's where he uh, he went from Venezuela. Joseph. Um, yeah, Martinez. if I can remember correctly, he was already in Europe at a smaller team. I forget the name. See. I, I think it was I'll in Italy. It I'll check. Uh, no, I he, he was at Caracas, Young Boys, Turin, Turin, and then, Turin. And Turin. then Turin. Atlanta United. Right, Turin? Yeah, Turin. Yeah. Yeah, and ever since he came over here, just they just uh, I don't yeah. know. No one, nobody would really said, "Hey, let's well, take." Well, yeah. So even so, again, because he, w- I guess I didn't know that, but if let's just say he had that season like he did, and because even then I thought everyone was gonna like he was kind of the talk. He had the most goals and he was doing well, and he kind of became the talk. And I'm like, okay, this guy's gotta get picked up by somebody, some like Spurs or I don't know. You still have him on there? Yeah. How old is he? He is 30? 28. 28. And around and the time when you noticed him. 17. When you noticed him, it was. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 21. Four years ago. And he's 28? He's 28. So 24. He was 24. So, so, he, so he was, he was he in was Europe a, young, yeah. but yeah. it just wasn't happening for yeah. him. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I would have thought that that year would have been. Like the year to go the out. The year to go out. And yeah. I don't know, like, yeah, like Newcastle would have picked him up or something. Because the guy that's 24, the Miguel guy, he got picked up two years ago and he was 22. Yeah. So that's where I see it. It's like 
he, obviously that Miguel guy with Paraguay maybe wouldn't get the opportunity, but because he did well at New uh, Atlanta, Newcastle picked him up, and now he's kind of like building into. He's 24 now, and he's building into it or whatever. Or I think he's. He might, I could be wrong. He could be 28 now. Also, I gotta check. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did we just speak on this whole thing about young players leaving before the World Cup, and we just re- didn't realize Camavinga? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it literally just destroyed everything we talked about. No, because we're coming. Because no, because, because there was, there was, it was before the Euros. No, but the difference. They were looking at him. Yeah, but the, but the di- you got to remember the difference with Camavinga is he plays against these top level teams on not to say on a daily basis, but against um, when he goes to France, he plays against the but high level was, players. He was on a, so he's on a team that was lower than Monaco. Yeah, but the thing is, is that he's actually playing in the Euros with France. He was playing in the in their nations league, and he was actually performing there. So his he Quite was a few games, yes. But he was actually getting the recognition before that because I've heard about him before the going to the Euros, and I'm like, oh, who is this guy? And da, 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 and then obviously, like I said, that's what we're talking about. Where it's now benefit the nations league has benefited yes. players like himself because before it was a friendly, and if he played, everyone could care less. Yeah. But because he played in the nations league against I don't know Holland or Switzerland, and he performed. And I was like, oh, who's this guy now? That's what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. So that so my point, I guess, for it, I'm thinking more of USA aspect. True, true. I was USA just, aspect. Let's give me the concept you know, of it. Yeah, yeah. So I yes, it contradicts what we just said, but I'm thinking more no, of I what USA's yeah, aspect yeah, yeah. is and who they're playing, who their competition is, what <laughs> right. this right, guy's right. going against if he's playing against Belgium in the Nations League in the regular league game, he's going against the top defenders in the back line yeah, there, there yeah, in the somewhere world. Somewhere in the world, yeah. So no, yeah, you're right, you're you know right, right, you're right, you're right. So but again, that, he was 18, 19, 16, 17 yeah. or something like but that. But again, the difference now is that he went against actual legitimate players that start in the top clubs as opposed to a friendly game where those guys are the third, fourth backup player that will maybe never get a call back, you know? And he probably walked through them. It's like, well, Holland, when he scored an eight goals in a tournament when he was 17, it was like, okay, well, it's, it's, I think it was like Olympics, man. Like, so it happened. People didn't really pay attention to it because it was the Olympics. And then now he kind of kept doing it. It's like, oh, wait, where was this guy? And somebody just said um, the Juventus, the old Juventus, I don't know if you saw it, the CEO of Juventus, the previous, whoever the previous one was, because I guess there's a new one. Yeah. He, he came out and stated, he goes, my biggest regret was not getting Haaland from Molde from um, when he was, I think, 18 or 17. We could have got him for $2 million. He goes, but we didn't go after him. He said, that was my biggest regret after I left. My biggest regret my entire time at Juventus being the CEO was not getting Holland for $2 million. I was like, dang, that's crazy. Because, again, nobody cared. Nobody cared at the time what, what they were playing because they were playing nobody. But if he was playing in a Nations League, it would be a completely different story. And he, and he did that in a Nations League game, that would be a completely different story. Everybody would be going after that guy. That's just, again... How I how I viewed it, but yeah, I mean, I think that that was my main whole thing on this new guy, Pepe. I think, I, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll end up somewhere good. Oh yeah, I I but I, however but we but just discussed it, I think yeah, he'll end but, up somewhere good. Yeah, he'll end up somewhere good because the way I think the way like how you said, and I think a little. A little bit of what I said, it could go one or two ways. It, it, like you said, if he does well in these next coming months and, and, and within this year and going forward, he could get picked up before the World Cup. Um, but if he's, but if he's in that consistent level of like doing really well, of course they're going to pick him up for the World Cup. And if he, pl- and if he plays and score, if he scores two or three good goals, I think, and he hasn't gone anywhere, I think he'll get more recognition just from that because – I I'm I I as as bad as it sounds I didn't like the fact of how everybody blew up Hamas off the one goal I was like okay this guy's good, but he's not Real Madrid good people let's get that straight and he got there I as much as he did okay and maybe like three highlights out of the entire time there I'm like this guy was not worthy of going to Real Madrid for the fee that he went for and for what he did I was like I um. The Russian guy from that year, or the the last World Cup, or the or the one in the, or the one in Russia, I think probably would have had a better chance because he scored like three, like two goals in the first game and 
two in the next, and then the and then they rush actually went far that year. I was just like, when the hell did this happen? When, when did Russia become good? <laughs> I was like, I've heard of Russia all year, and all of a sudden they get out of the group. <laughs> like, right, they made a playoff. Yeah, game. they went like they went pretty the far. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like they went pretty far. I was like, what the heck? Just I was like, Russia, Croatia in the quarters. I was like, what? That I would have never that thought happened. this was gonna happen. That's funny. So yeah, it's like so. I I I think that too is I I think I've seen a lot of teams now kind of like step away from that a little bit and kind of be like, uh, let's hold off, let's see, let's give this guy the rest of the year after the World Cup and let's see what he does. Unless they do something tremendously amazing, then yeah, then they'll go after a player like that and and really push him to be on the you know really push for him to be on the team. Because I I don't think I don't know if I've seen anybody lately. I'm trying to think the last World Cup. Last one was Russia, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. See, like even that guy, he did well, and I think, I think, I think he ended up at um, Valencia or Villarreal. He's in Spain. He's somewhere in Spain, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't there before. No, he's been, he's been in Spain. Okay. I just don't remember if it was the same team. Maybe, but he's I've seen, but I've seen a couple guys that are like, that did well. They probably held off, and then eventually got picked up. So. It happens. I mean, now I, I, I guess I don't see it as much as before, because before it was like, oh man. Like, I remember when Mueller, that first year, he scored, like, six goals. Everybody wanted him, but he just stood at Munich because he was already on, like, one of the best teams in the world. So, it's like, eh, where's he really going to go? So. But I guess the Nation League has actually. Yeah, I was, like I said earlier, it's picking up. Yeah. The France and Belgium game was legit. Did you watch any of it? I did. Yeah, I didn't I get to see it. Yeah, you were texting me, but oh, I was kind of doing stuff. Yeah, it was two zero. Like, yeah. done. Zidane's gonna come in. He's gonna coach. Yeah, ten twenty minutes later. Holy shit, they're coming back. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I know. I was like, what? Like, this game got juice, and it did. I was watching. It was back and forth. I was like, yeah. Like, if this continues, because even the Italy game was good. Yeah, the Italy game was good. I saw uh, briefly that one, and so I, I just kind of glanced at this one. Because when it was 2-0, I was like, oh, 2 zero. I was like, fuck. I was like, that early on, I was like, oh, my God, what I mean, just happened? The card. And then, no, 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 not the Spain, this one. Oh, yeah, this one. This the, the, France yeah, and, France the France and Belgium. Belgium. I was like, 2 zero. I was like, oh, crap. But we have to, f- we have to see, after this game, we have to see. The rankings. Belgium knocked out of number one in the rankings. They have to get fucking knocked well, out. Well, if it's like I said, and they're going off the point system, it's like I told you, France can beat them probably like five times and they could still be number uh, one. If it's, if it's off it that. feels like it still will be, which is dumb. It, it, it Because it doesn't make sense because, I don't know, because then you yeah. have USA jump up out of nowhere and then like other well, teams you gotta, Well, you got to remember is that, well, it just depends on the scale of where they were and what that what that team was at, and then how they get closer to that that number. I guess you could, just from what I've seen and how it looks and the way it, as I read it to be. Um, so let's just say USA and whoever was around them, their numbers weren't really far. So if that other team loses but USA is winning, then yeah, they obviously have a better chance of jumping them and whatnot. It just depends on who and what. So. I, I I I don't know, but yeah, that game was that was intense. Oh, before I forget, did you? Sorry, did you watch some of the Spain game or no? I I got maybe like ten minutes out of it. Did you watch that kid? Which one? Number nine. Uh, the Torres kid, the one that scored the two goals. No, 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 no. He's, oh, he's uh, number eleven. He's like, the, the one who scored the score. He's the number one 11. who scored the goals. He plays at City. I'm oh yeah. About this new like midfielder number nine. He was eighteen. Oh no. They said he was legit all over the place for them. No, that kid I, see, I see him running. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, no, I haven't seen him. But uh, yeah, I forgot his name. Damn it, what is his name? Damn, they do look young, though. Just looking at some of them, they look like young players. <laughs> it's just funny to see this after the Euro Cup. Like, hey, what, this is a tournament. Well, the thing was is that... Well, no, sorry, not the thing, but like... The Spain team actually was the only one, I think, that was closest to beating Italy in the whole thing. Because they went to penalties against them. Oh, I remember. I totally forgot they're playing again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They were the only ones, I think, that were the closest out of anybody to really beat them. Really, really beat them. Yeah. So they didn't lose. They haven't lost to them because they went to penalties. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I, that number nine kid, I forget his name. <sighs> that one. Wow. Yeah. Come on, my guy. But yeah, this uh, this Nations League can uh, keep it keep it like this. Well, yeah, they, as long as they balance it out, like I said, and, and and I think it's it's beneficial to the players that 
that don't really get a chance to right. Like I just said, that number that, yeah. nine kid. I don't know who the hell he was until this yeah. game. That he was. He said he played great. I saw him. He yeah, and I, really and so I think I think this is what. I mean, they're making that discussion now. It's like they they. I don't know if you heard that. There's now that are saying that they're considering doing the World Cup every two years. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no, why? It's like. And then someone goes, why not just make it every year then? (laughs) (laughs) Somebody, one of the coaches is like, well, then why not just make it every year? I was like, this doesn't make sense. You should go two years. Because we already have Euros. and I mean, if you really look at it, they're all, yes, four years. But it's it's like a two-year span between each one. It's like odd or even years. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that the fucking pandemic switched shit around. Yeah. Why this happened and why that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that red card, to be honest with you. Oh, did you see? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. think I I don't think it's a red, and I don't think he got full contact on his face. I feel like he got him. I don't know. I don't. The thing is, is that you, it, and, me, and me personally, and the, and the var and the var looks like it because the way he yeah. fists his arm and like me, kind of like me personally. I mean, I teach my players when they head her to do that because that's to protect yourself. Yeah. If he were to tuck his arm in and then go like this, yeah, then that's then right. yeah. But the thing is, he jumped and kind of went like he already had his arms out, yeah. so his arm was already out. So that right there is again is for him to protect himself for the guy coming in, which yeah, was yeah. Sergio who came in and tried to head her with him. And let's just say he doesn't put his arm there; he's already above him. He could easily push him and knock him over, and then it could even be for you know something worse. Yeah. So I I don't know. I think I think that was a bit harsh. I mean, I didn't see how. Sir, I mean, he did get hit. Sergio did get hit in the neck, and that like, it's a yeah. pretty hard hit. I wouldn't doubt that, but I just think it was more for himself. Like that is the way they where we teach the kids in the sense to header a ball is to really just protect themselves. Right. It seemed more of him protecting himself rather than him really swinging into him and trying to hurt him, and, and purposely put an elbow in. No, I agree. I agree. I don't think. It, I don't think it should have been a red. So, but. The fact that they finally lost. I, I, I felt it was going to happen. I, I didn't felt think so. I don't think they would have lost if they had that red. Uh, if they didn't get that red, they wouldn't have lost. It's probably one of the penalties have, again. I'd have to watch the game again. I think and really they would have gone it. to penalties again. Because they had, they did miss a few chances, Italy. Yeah, which we just saw with yeah. yeah, but I think... Yeah, the red, I think the red did make a difference there. I think... But uh, I, felt, I, I before the game, I was like, okay, Italy's favored to win. I was like, ah, I don't know, I feel like Spain... I think I think from where they've been and what they're what they're doing uh, have grown now to come back to really I've, to really I want to say be what they were but at least compete cuz for the last couple of years they weren't really competing like they were they weren't really the team to be like oh let's watch Spain again you know and see how they play and you know they were losing games they were getting by some games and that was it they weren't but I think now they're they're kind of Getting back to that dynamic where they were when they when they first won Euros was a very young team that can just dominate and play well. You know, I give credit obviously to Italy and everyone else that they've been able to you know maintain that. So I think I think Spain is finally just kind of like getting back to their roots of what they were, and and Luis Enrique is doing a pretty good of a job there to at least to rebuild that that side. And then I, yeah, no, I agree. I think uh, I think Spain's going to be up there again, back in top five, yeah. and, and competing. Yeah. Um, but for the final, France and taking? Spain. France and Sp- I mean, like I guess I was surprised. I, I get. I was giving up on France. Yeah. But I told you, two zero done. Right. I was like, what the fuck's going on with all these players? You know. But the way, sorry, the way they came back, and I was yeah. watching it, I was like, holy fuck. But again, Belgium did this again. They literally just play balls out the yeah. first half, and then once they realize they're like, oh, they literally look yeah. tired. You know who got hurt again? For Belgium? Uh, no, I didn't see who. Just guess. De Bruyne? No. Who's always been hurt? Hazard? Yes. Oh, dear he Lord. literally took himself out again. He really, I saw he did this again. Oh, God. I was like, dude, does he not want to play? Or is he really hurt? Because he's just trotting off. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. he didn't play the rest of the game. His brother didn't get to play. I don't know why. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't check into it. Yeah. But the fact that Belgium was up 2-0, man. Like a good solid two zero, like hey, you take over this game. Yeah. But no, they fucking like just shit it down their leg. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to credit too much France for like stepping up, or is it because Belgium just really shit down their leg and they're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? 
So going into the game for the final, I think it's going to be a good game after seeing these two uh, semis. Because Spain, again, like you just like they're they're getting it. Yeah, they're getting it together. It looks like they're coming into Rome with more games. So I think this final is going to be pretty good. Um, I'm I'm still I'm, going for France. I'm I'm gonna say I don't think it's going to be that good. Really, the only reason I see it is that um, the reason why France won was just purely out of experience. You're talking about every player there has been in a situation where you go down to zero and can experience the, every player there is a veteran esque player that's been playing for about more than five years. I think at Spain, everybody that's on that team has probably been playing less than five years. So I think what we're seeing is a, a very young team that's, you know, very capable of competing, but a very inexperienced team. Because there's a lot of players there that we haven't heard Spain? of. For Spain. They don't look inexperienced. They don't, no, 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 no. They don't look inexperienced. But you got to remember is that they're, they're a young, I guess you could say, hot shot team that's like running gun and let's go. Yeah, they'll probably outplay France in terms of speed, but I think France is going to outplay them in terms of experience and say, yeah, run all you want. We're going to find... It's like what we just saw, Belgium. Run all you want. You're beating us 2-0. We're going to get you in the second half. And they put three on them. I think it's going to be a good game. It, no, no, no. I, I feel like... like the way, it, sorry, the I, way no, Spain no. plays is not the same way Belgium plays. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game, but I feel like it, I f- I'm going to favor France more than Spain because I believe France has the far more experience in terms of their depth and their players that they have. Whereas Spain, I, I think it's just going to be a lot of situations where it's just an inexperienced player. It's like, man, you should have scored that. But it's like, or man, you should have done this. But I think it's a guy that's like, well, he's inexperienced. He's only been on the team a year and he's been playing over here, you know, whatever, three years. Then you got Benzema, Mbappe, Griezmann, Pogba. You got guys that won the World Cup and have been playing for about eight years, nine years, where they're not going to give up an inexperienced opportunity. You know what I mean? So they could, we could say Spain can go up 1-0. And it's like, oh, my God, they're just dominating them. It's like, well, wait, France is experienced. They're going to let them run out their tank, and then France is going to come in with the experience and probably put in two goals. You know? So, I, 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 like I said, it could be a 2-1 game. But we could look at the game and watch it and be like, man, Spain dominated that game. Well, they lost because of inexperience. And I and if I if we like you just said, Belgium was all over it first half, and then they kind of took their foot off the pedal. Well, France is an experienced team. They noticed they took the foot off the pedal and went at them and won the game. Because they're experienced. They know well, they they knew what they were doing, what they were capable of doing to get the game back. And they got it back pretty quick. Because they first they hit that first one and the second one came right after. It took like five minutes, maybe seven minutes right after the first one. And then you're right back in it, 2-2. Momentum switched like no tomorrow right after that. And I think it was France the west of the way. And Belgium just didn't know what to do after that. Because I, I'm not saying France is inexperienced, but I, but I think you said, like you just said, France was, has that, that uh, reluctancy to, yeah, we, we're up to zero. Let's ease off. We got this. We got control. Da, da, da. That one hit. And, 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 and they say 2-0 is always a dangerous score. Because if you give them one, there's an opportunity a second one's coming. And I think for Italy would have been the same thing. You gave them one. Yeah, like if I they said, had ten more minutes, that, that second the, one was coming. That and the oh, four yeah. players. Yeah, yeah. But even with those ten players, even with those ten Possibly, players, yeah, I still yeah. think I still think with ten more minutes, Italy gets the second one, mm-hmm. and they tie it two two. So I think it's just going to be uh, who's got the better experience in that sense, and who's got the better decision making because. Anybody down 2-0, I think, would have been like, ah, that's it. You know, especially at the half and early on. Some teams would just crumble and be like, ah, oh, that's it, we're done. But France held their own. They kept it to 2-0 at the half, and then they came in the second half. And it's like it's like I tell a lot of my teams, in the second half, you're down 2-0. If you don't score in the first 15, 10, 15 minutes, it's going to be harder to score later on. And they got that goal in the first 10, 15 minutes. It was, what, the 60th, uh, 65th, 60th, 62nd minute? So that's easily over 10 minutes. They got the goal. Okay, the next one's coming. Boom, came in the next seven. Two, two, you're right back in it. We start all over. We have the whole momentum going forward now. And France just kept their foot on the pedal and kept going. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Don't yeah. Me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch it. I kind of want to see it. Looking for France. It's on Sunday, right? Sunday, like 11.45. Yeah. Let me check. Should I be wanna, a doozy. I kind of want to check something here. Uh, Should be a doozy. Let's see the squad. So, let's see. They didn't even. They didn't even. <laughs> De Gea is not even starting in the goal. 
Yeah, he didn't start. There's a lot of players, like I said, didn't yeah, start. So, There's a lot of players that didn't. So look, the first, so the the is the only older goalkeeper out of all of them. He's 30. The next two are 24 and 23. So there's your inexperience right there. Uh, out of the back line, Azapokuleta, can never say his damn last name. He's the one from Chelsea. He's 32. Sergio Roberto, 29. Martinez, 30. Laporte, 27. 24, Rigolillo. Paul, Rodrigo? I don't know. Paul Torres, 24. Eric Garcia, 20. And he's the one that's suspended. He, uh, he got, I don't know, I guess he got recorded in some game. Hmm. Um, but it looks like they got a, uh, their back line's eh. I wouldn't consider their back line really strong for for um, for um Spain. The middle, Coque from Atletico, Busquets. Those guys are old. Marco Alonso, old. They have older players, but not like experienced players. Rodri. Is that the one you're talking about? Rodri? No. Which one? You said there was a young guy. He was 18. Uh, there's nine. a 20 year old, Brian Gill. Does that have a number next to him? No, there's one at 17. I think that's him. Pablo Gavira. He's from Barca. Mm, no, that's him. Pedro Porro. Porro. He's 22. There's only one, one young guy here. There's three young guys that I'm looking at. Dude, what, are, what are you looking on? On the app. Doesn't have their number next to them. The the foot, the one that we always look at. Yeah, yeah. He's not on. There. He has to be on there. I don't know which one it is. It just, it just doesn't have numbers. That's why. Because you said it goes by. You just check the number. But I don't see numbers. Really. So it. It's not that these guys are young. Is I these guys don't have. I guess you could say enough experience. With the with the Spain team in terms of this level. The fuck is happening in my head? Where I think France, it's literally the entire World Cup team plus Benzema. (laughs) (laughs) Because he wasn't there. (laughs) True. You know, so I and I and that's what I'm saying is that the inexperience of Spain is yeah, these guys are good players. They're older. Some of them are older, but it's like a lot of them they haven't played enough with with them. You know, like together. Whereas Spain, this has been the same team since the last World Cup that they won. Because I think we even said, like, the only two guys that I, that I don't think are there is, what, Revio and uh, Matuidi. I think it's this kid, uh, Pino. Oh. I don't. Well, maybe the roster that they have on here isn't. No, it's on there. Has on to there. Be. He's a forward. Oh. oh, he's a forward then. So I saw him at the midfield because I was looking at the midfield. Oh. Um, yeah, because it's like Mbappe, Griezmann, Benzema, Martial, Diaby, Ben Yedder. That's the forwards. The middles, Pogba, Vero. They didn't even take Conte. Oh, yeah, for France? Yeah. yeah. I was about to say that earlier. They didn't take they him. They didn't even take him. I wonder why. Maybe he's hurt. Yeah, so I, th- I think there's a little bit more experience on the on the French side. Just a little bit more. No, I would say a lot more. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm hoping these are the right rosters because I'm looking at it. I, w- I would think these are the right players that are that are that were taken. I didn't I didn't see the ones when they show in the game, but <coughs> yeah. So that that that'll be a good one. It, it should be a good one. I, I think it, I think it's gonna come down to who's got the better decision making and experience in the sense because France France really showed their experience in that Belgium game. They really showed it. I mean, to be down two zero, yeah, I agree. At that stage. At the half of all things, it, and to score in the first fifteen minutes two goals, that that goes to show the adjustments that they made at half and the experience that they had going forward. So that made a that that played a huge role in that for, for me at least. And then Spain, I think Spain was fortunate with the 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 red card after they already had one goal, right? Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, it was that guy from Spain, Pablo Gavi. So he's the one in Barcelona. Yeah, sorry, he's from Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid, that kid. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, you're yeah. Oh, okay, he's yeah. seventeen. Him, yeah, he played well. Okay, well, yeah. See, so that so this is where we kind of go back now. He's at Barcelona already. He hasn't played for Barcelona, but he's playing well here. So now they're gonna. I mean, for all we know, what the damn coach they have, who knows if he'll give this kid an opportunity? But if let's just say it was somebody else, he'd probably get an opportunity now because of what he's been able to do against Italy, which were the Euro champs. It's like yeah, you know what I mean. So, 
it, this, like I said, this is beneficial for players like okay. him and, yeah. and and a few others that now have that opportunity. Whereas before, if it was a friendly and he played, would we have watched that game and it was a friendly? Right, no, right, right. we would have cared less. <laughs> we would not even be talking about it. Oh, it was a friendly. Nobody cares. No, I think uh, as much as I think we're deciding that these are good because yeah, they compete. Yeah. yeah. Even though even though Europeans say it's not a friendly, but back then they knew it was a friendly. It's like right now with the qualifiers. The like the early stages of qualifiers, sometimes they take everyone, sometimes they don't, and it depends who they're playing. Like we know it's a friendly, but at the same time, there's a po- there's there's still a mindset that these players want to compete in yeah. some sense. But when they know it does not go in their way, and they know yeah. it's a friendly, they know. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, for yeah, tomorrow, yeah. like Portugal's playing Qatar again, but it's yeah. a friendly. Yeah. So I was like, but I think, but I, think Cristiano, go. I was like, fuck it, I, I need to score ten thousand goals. So Did they like, take him? Yeah, no, he's there. Oh, okay. So, but like again, he's he, he's he's in the mindset of like, yes, we're in Portugal. We want, you know, it'll be good because the next game is a qualifier. Yeah. And they need to win that yeah. game or at least tie, win or tie because they're yeah. in second. So, yeah, the mindset going into that is like, okay, we're, we're going to go into it. But if it was just that friendly for the weekend and they go back, then it would have been like, well, what the fuck did you, we do you this? You know what, I, I, what I'm noticing with some of these at least qualifiers is I feel like early in the early stages of the qualifier, they treat them as a friendly depending on who they play. If it's a really low ranked, low weak team, I've noticed there was one that was like, it was one of the first games. I don't know if it was Portugal. It was somebody else kind of watching. They're playing. I don't know. They're playing somebody that I know would never make the World Cup. And I'm watching the players. I'm like, I've never seen any of these guys. And then as you get closer when they finally play like the stronger team, they take everybody. I was like, what the hell were these guys earlier? You know. So it's like I feel like they're kind of treating some of the teams that they play against and some of the, um, or I guess where they're at in terms of the 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 qualifiers. As the friendly to be like, eh, we'll just take these guys because do we really need them, these bigger guys to beat this team? Like, we should beat them with our second team kind of deal. Like, that's just how I see it. Well, I think, I think early dynamic, on at least. Yeah, I think now I when, think, when it's crucial and, and I think you know, the dynamics changed also as well with these um, national teams because they're realizing, I think the better you are with these players all together, the chemistry fits right away when, like you said, when, well, these, when, they, hold on, like, when these young guys are able to get that. Uh, that opportunity it's yeah. like it's like if we did it like back then and you're just playing you're not really getting the chemistry with the top the the starters yeah you know so like if we're going to throw him in here in this Euro Cup where that's probably his debut game or a sunshine game yeah like we'll realize okay he's able to do that and he's able to bring the chemistry with the team so he fits yeah you know so I think I think lately these games or even a friendly that they're able to bring most of the players cuz they want to see at least that, that chemistry should be building it as opposed to just like, hey, it's just a friendly. Just go out there and play. Well, like I said, I think it's because cool. I'm looking at it right because now. Because most of these players are playing in big clubs nowadays. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. But I think I think for some of them, I, I just I still think that at least with the qualifiers is there is now for some they're friendlies because I'm looking at it right now. Like Belgium is a good example. They're in. They're like their qualifier for this. They're at 16 points. There's two games left. The next team is Czech Republic. The team under that is Wales. They both have eight points. So they're in at first. So they're in first, and they're already qualified for the next, I guess you could say, round of, or basically, this is it, right? After this, it's it's World Cup, as far as I know. This is the, like these last games. Like I think this there's is, three, three qualifying games left, I think. There's two. It shows two. So, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying like this. Some, some groups have three. Some yeah, have yeah. But, well, at least for Belgium, there's two left, but yeah. it's like they're already in. So those next two games, they're going to take guys that are like, okay, this is your chance if we're going to take you or not. They're not going to take Lukaku and a couple of the other guys from what it looks like. Because I looked at the last game before um, um, the before this game. Mm-hmm. The last game was in September, and it was a qualifier, and it was against Belarus. They didn't take De Bruyne. They didn't take Lukaku. They didn't even take the goalkeeper. They didn't take like half the guys, and right. they barely beat Belarus 1-0. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, for, but they're already like in because at that point they were at 12 points or f- 13 points because now they have 16. Um, so they were already in and they're like, oh, we're playing the last place team in our group. It's like, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. for, that's what I'm saying. For some, it's like, do we really need to bring De Bruyne and all these other guys and this and that? It's like, we don't really need these guys. So it's like, we're already in with whatever. So for some, it's that situation. For yeah. others, it's a different situation. It's like, oh, no, 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 we got to bring everybody because we need. We gotta get these points and this and that. So I think I think Port. Uh, I don't know if Portugal's in that in that same bus. Uh, Portugal needs to win. They gotta win the a last two. Yeah, because they want to be first. Yeah, the first two go, but they want to be first. Yeah, Serbia's win. right behind them with eleven. Yeah, 
So, yeah. And I, and I think the last, uh, let me see if they took everybody. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. But I'm, I've, like I said, I just I noticed that with a couple games. At least not, with, not with for Brazil. Brazil's like way already in. They're like 20 something points up. And they're but still they, having a lot of players. They've played like a bunch of games, though. Yeah, see, because even that, I don't know. Oh, yeah, because Ronaldo didn't go to the last game for because well, uh, they got a yellow, and they were just like it was it was a it was a, it was a friendly, it wasn't a no no no. They played Azerbaijan for qualifying. Oh, because he got the two goals, and they're like, you don't, we don't need you there. Like they played like, Ireland, and they played a friendly with Qatar, and, and then, then they went Azerbaijan. to Azerbaijan. Yeah, but so, but he left after the Ireland game. Yes, because he played the Ireland because game. he couldn't play the actual second game because he had a yellow. Or two. The two Ireland left. game is the one where he scored in the last dying last second. Yeah, yeah. So but I, okay. I know for a fact he couldn't play because he had like a couple of yellows or something. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to see if he, yeah, because he got a yellow for his celebration. He took off for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, but kind of seeing it, it's like some depending on where they're at on the table. It's like we don't need to take all these guys. Let's take the other guys. I just think I think certain teams are in that situation. I don't think everybody's in that situation. You know what I feel bad for? I didn't want to bring it up. I don't know what's going on, but you're probably going to be like, nah, he just sucks. <laughs> uh, um, Felix. Ever since the Euros, he didn't really, he only played one game. He hasn't really played. Well, he's one of, the, but see, he's another example. He's that example. But I, know, I, I think I, he's good. No, I, I think he's good. good. No, no, I think he is good. I think where he ended up was not good. Right, because of his defensive mind of team. Yeah. Yeah, Simeone is yeah. a great coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he's a defensive yeah. mind. Yeah, and I and don't think Felix have, is a defensive player. Obviously not, because he's attacking. Yeah. So I don't think he was a good fit. But for then him again, now. the way he's at, I still in my at this point in my, that's funny. It sounds cliche or whatever, corny. In my heart, for him at Portugal, the way it's going, I think he's he's uh he's the next well he's the next uh, World Cup, not this one. Like he he could be on the team. On oh the bench, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to be a starter, I don't think so anymore. For now. No, oh, yeah. He, I think I, his, it, his time it, is once I Ronaldo I think he's got to go somewhere else. I think for him to... No, I'm talking about, sorry, I'm talking about just Portugal. Yeah, but I think... So I think once no, Ronaldo yeah. leaves... No, I think even before that. Like, even if we're before... Like, I, I still think the move to Madrid, to Atletico, wasn't... I wouldn't say it wasn't good. I guess in the moment, yeah, it was great. But I still had my doubts even when that move was made because I'm like... Mm, I kind of started to watch. I was like, ah, he's an attacking guy. Like, he's a guy that just wants to go, go, go. It's like, he's not going to sit back and wait the whole time. Exactly. And and yeah, that's what Atletico is. So, I think for him, he's got to eat. For him, the World Cup is is or the Nations League World Cup. He's really got to get into that and and really do well for someone else to be like, we need to go after that guy. That's the guy we got to go I, get. Yeah, with him, with Juan Felix, I don't know, or Joe Felix. Sorry, Joe Joe Felix. Um. Yeah, I I feel I don't see I feel like you know what team would be I think what he would be he would do really really well I think would be like Liverpool because they're an attack team whatever team attacks a lot but I, but I'm saying play I'm, with him. no but I'm saying for him because he's going well for Jota no but I'm saying from the sense of like he can't go to he could go to an attacking team but he's got to have a team that's kind of well established around it already and I think and I think like I said Liverpool would be I think a good fit for him in terms of how he plays like. We could say we'd send him to, I don't know, um, who's a... We could say go to Arsenal. Arsenal attacks, but they're playing like crap right now. Well, now they finally started to win games again, and they're okay. Two they're games, getting there. Um, we could say uh, go to Spurs, because Spurs, apparently, they need players, and Harry Kane doesn't want to be there or whatever. You know, he's That would probably be like a good fit, I guess you could say, for him to go to, and because they're an attack team also. So it's like... And it's with uh, Spiritu Santo, who's also Portuguese. Yeah. So... That's what I'm saying. There's there's some teams that yeah maybe and there's others like uh, I don't know who I just, knows. I just realized there's another forward that I, I think should go there uh, once Kane leaves. Oh, fuck, I forgot who it was. Jimenez. No, a forward. Jimenez. A striker. Jimenez. Was it Jimenez I was thinking of? No. He plays at Wolverhampton and he's uh, a nine and he's probably I think he'd be better than Kane and he would and he he's been with Santo for many years and I think Santo's the reason why he's actually been good at Wolverhampton. <laughs> No, I was thinking of someone else. Uh, if from it comes the, to me, from the Premier League or just another league, another another forward. I'm like, hmm, I think he would actually do well there. Uh, Holland. 
No, fuck. It, it, it'll uh, come to me. It'll come to me. It's like one of those forwards that's like doing decent right now that probably do better there because Kane's not doing anything. I can't think of fucking oh. what I was thinking of. But anyways, I don't want to take too much time. No, yeah, 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 that's fine. But yeah, I mean that that's kind of how I see what yo Felix. Um, but I mean that's kind of all I think think of the Nations League. That's all you think of? Because there's a few other things before I forget. I'm trying to think of anything else that I can bring up because... Because we, we missed, what, two weeks? Yeah, but the the league... I mean, the Premier League, uh, the French League, with Messi and everything going on there. They lost to somebody. But I'm pretty sure that was bound to happen. The Premier League, it's getting tight with... Liverpool, Chelsea, United City. Come on. We have to understand what the fuck Ole was doing not starting Ronaldo. It's just common sense. You put in your best players, and if you have a good, strong 2-0 lead, 3-0 lead, or whatever, the, and you and you possess the game. Okay, Ronaldo, come out. Mm-hmm. But to do it the opposite way, to put him in in a sense, we're like, oh, shit, we need you. To, like, I think he did that Who wrong. did they tie against? And they lost. Against who? Was it Austin Villa? Uh, I don't remember for the. I don't remember what game it was. Was it Everton? It was the last I think game. It was Everton. It was the last game. I think it was Everton. It was Everton. Benitez. Oh, Everton. oh yeah. No, they tied. Sorry, they tied. But do you, he and they brought play. him in at the end to try to score. Right, which you can't do that with Ronaldo. Ronaldo has to mm, need the whole I, game. I would. I would. Uh, I would look at it as a. Well, Even like I mean, I said, your boy I, said it, and he said it perfectly. Sir Alex Ferguson. I would have started him. Yeah, we would have started him, but. Again, I think I, I think I, I no 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 I can see it's why it's a boring too. game because Everton's top three or top five. Yeah, right but you'll get another chance and a crack at him. Not only oh, that, I not only that, that uh, but the thing is, this is also a marathon and not a sprint. And everybody seems like they want to sprint to the end, especially now with oh, shit, with man. especially now with Ronaldo. They want to sprint, and it's like, well, you remember? The, and I just saw that the, the <laughs> that just happened. Yeah, they just happened. You they missed. just scored. It was one of the what ifs. Yeah, <laughs> I just really what if, fucking. What if he just, just, just missed miss the ball? He fucks up in the ball. He fucking scored it. What the fuck? That's why dude? you don't control it like oh that? Oh my god! That's why you tell kids not to do that crap, but they never want to listen. I'm bloody Wales. I know, right? Fucking Ramses. Wow. Is he the one that did it? Fucking Ramses. <laughs> Jesus. Well, we just saw an own goal with Ramsey's and his goalie just, I don't know um, what the fuck it is. But anyways, you were saying? Uh, it's not a marathon, it's a sprint. It, yeah, I get yeah, it. Because, it, Ooh, again, it, it's it's early on. Everton obviously is on a good roll, so I think it was more of a, well, they've been using them already for the last couple games, and the the two games before that, obviously, they didn't really go that well. So they don't want to overwork him. And, I mean, he's not at the age, again, where he was. And we're not saying that he's he's not capable of getting injured. But that's a risk sometimes you're not willing to take early on. Because if you take that risk now, you're missing out on him for the next. And and and, and you got to remember, they're looking at the perspective of the games ahead. And uh, and I even said the the games ahead are none of them are easy. No, I, I the think, next ones are fucking Yeah, intense. so it's like. Do I play him the full here? He goes to his country and plays full there, and then comes back, and I gotta play him full for the next six games. It's well, like the, well, that, again, it's all I'm saying. I'm sure, is, I'm sure people almost, were like when he went in, he played for what thirty minutes? I think so. Okay, just give him the first half to have that comfortable lead. Is what I was saying. Yeah. You don't have to leave him the whole game. Like if you knew, I think that I think that's what Sir Alec, uh, Ferguson was thinking too. Start him. Yeah. Get your comfortable lead, like I said. Yeah. And possess the ball. Play the way you want to play, and put the rest of your players in to finish yeah. it. That's what my no, yeah. I mean, I, the other way around was a little different. Where I was like, yeah. "What the fuck, dude?" No, and, and it, but it goes to show that we, you know, coaches and managers and everything like that, they, they they're human. They 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 feel something in the beginning in terms of what they want to do, and then the outcome comes, and then but then we can go back and say, "Well, we started them. He scored a goal. They scored a goal. Then the question is." Well, could we have started somebody else? Could somebody else have gone? Ronaldo just gave that goal early on, but kind of was like, kind of drifted out at the rest of the game. You know, he didn't seem, he didn't seem up to par. Maybe are they overworking him? You know, that question could come up to mind or whatever. You know, there's always going to be some tor- some form of critique if they don't win the game now, as we as I've seen now. 
because before it was like if we tied this last year without him, we tied. Well, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You're not. You're not. You have. I know. No. 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 I get it. No. I now. get it. I get it. But now it's becoming again because of that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's becoming whatever it is now. With, you know the the criticism obviously for every single game from now on. So that's where again where we have to find out re- really Oli is capable of with this kind of critique and criticism going forward with Ronaldo and the team. It's basically now it's like, dude, we gave you the team. What are you going to do with it? Are you capable of being under this pressure and being able to, you know, maintain this? Or do we got to find somebody else and be able to push through this kind of, you know, pressure and this and that? So it's, it's, it, it just, it's going, it's becoming now more of, um, you're going to get criticized in every, at every aspect of the way now going forward just because you have Ronaldo. And I think the same is going to happen. The same is eventually going to happen to Pochettino. The difference here is we're losing to teams in the Premier League that are you're capable of losing to whether or not you have the teams that you have. Whereas in PSG, it's like you guys should not lose a single goddamn Which game. Which they did. Which they did. Which was so, fucking weird. Which now Pochettino is going to be heavily under the microscope and saying if – I'm pretty well, sure it's it, like, it, it kind of, but but again, it's it's it depends because the two different reasons is now. Here's here's what I look at, and I think maybe you could either correct me wrong or maybe you can agree. In the Premier League, it's the number one league in the world right now. Yeah, winning the league is literally neck to neck to champions. Obviously, champions is everything, yeah, 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 yeah. but when you win the league. In the Premier League, oh yeah, it's fucking, it's oh, yeah. it's, it's an accomplishment. Like I said, it's kind of neck to neck. Yeah, yeah, it's an accomplishment. But if you're at League One, yeah, you we are gonna be stunned if you lose because you have those three best players on mm-hmm. there. But if you lose, but then you're like, okay, well, obviously we got all these players because the Champions League, and that's all they care about now. Yeah, like, yeah, they didn't win League last season, which was weird. But at the same time, it's like, well, we're going for Champions. Yeah. To, like I feel like to them. Great, cool. We have our league. Yeah. Well, we have all these other trophies, and if, if it's not the league, like we want champions. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. why they're here. Yeah, no, like they yeah, made yeah. it clear that that's why those players are there. Yes, 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 yes. Manchester yes. United was like, holy shit, we can't let Ronaldo go. Yeah. So to them, it's like we want league because that's what they've been working for so long when Oli's gotten there. Yeah. Yes. Now that they have Ronaldo, they kind of like they get criticized double time, obviously because it's the Premier League. Yeah. And champions. As for like PSG, yeah, we're gonna say shit and be like, dude, like you couldn't beat against, like you couldn't win against this team. We don't have no who, clue who they are. Yeah, like not even one goal. Yeah, that's a fucking stunner. But at the same time, we're like, well, fuck. All right, well, if you guys can beat anybody else in champion, you guys can fucking beat City over this team. Yeah, two zero. That's fucking insane. Right? That's really weird. But yeah. they beat City. Yeah, right. They beat them in a good fashion. Like it's like, oh, they actually beat them. Yeah. So that's that's what I think for PSG it doesn't really matter. Like that's that's why yeah, when I look yeah, at yeah. the team, it's like I'm waiting for the the knockout stage yeah. and see how it goes. I can care less now at the, at the league, but everyone knows the Premier League, yeah, and, and the Champions League are like pretty much neck to neck. So that's why I think all he's gonna get more on the oh, hot yeah, seat as yeah. much as possible because he has two big, two big titles that they should be able to get very close to, if not win one of them. And for me, it's always going to be Champions League. Yeah. But if it's the other way around, it's the number one league in the world. So if yeah. they win the league, that's even amazing as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but again, see, he's on the hot team, man. I don't oh, know. No, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I would think he is, but it's like I could see why because he's had plenty of time to build that group. And it's like, okay, now you got the pieces, I guess, in the sense that you've wanted. Now you got to go and – perform it now you got to go and show it but my whole thing is always going to be so far again <laughs> it's funny that you said this last night like man you get really mad when they score on them and we're like dude relax it's like, yeah but here's the thing it's because i can feel ronaldo feel the same way it's yeah. like dude this should not be happening it's yes it's soccer and it happens yeah that sounds contradicting or whatever but why i get so like uh it's because this dude is coming into a team that should understand, okay, we have to do the obvious that can actually prolong the season is of what, again, the simple understanding of like, if you started him and it went well, great, take him out. But if you started him and didn't go well, 
then you, I believe, wouldn't get as much criticized as like, hey, you didn't start him. He didn't have a good game. That's on him as opposed to like, dude, you didn't start him. What the fuck? Like, you're a coach. Why, why didn't you start him? Everyone said you should start him. Look what happened. You guys tied. Imagine if, he, like you said, if he started yeah. or whatever. But if we, if I think if he started him, I think the the actual uh, critique would have been more on the collective of losing. Like, hey, what's wrong? Ronaldo's been there so far. Not like only this, only that, only this, only that. Like, unless Ronaldo was in there and he made some random subs against yeah. other players. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I would have saw. But again, when I saw the lineup, I was I really got in like. Hold on, dude. This is the Premier League. Like, you have this guy. Like, the games that I think that Ronaldo should not be playing is going to be the games after uh, a Champions League game that possibly is against Brentford. Yeah. Possibly against whoever, the lower team. Like, it's during getting close to the midseason, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Those are the type of games where I'm like, okay, don't start. I get it. But if I think I think the crucial that I'm I'm learning at least from seeing it, I think the crucial part, I mean it's always gonna be every game. Yeah. But I think some of the crucial parts is like you said, it might be a sprint or a marathon, but the first half of the season of the Premier League and then going towards uh January or February on, where those two are like, okay, you really have to assess yourself where you're at in the table. Yeah. Because the next couple of months coming after January are very crucial as opposed from the whole month of like November into December. Yeah. Because you're getting ready for holiday and whatever other uh, international games are. Hmm. And if it's, if you're lucky, your, 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 uh, your uh, schedule gives you that, which I think, I think Manchester might have that after these, these tough games, mm-hmm. which I think is going to lead to December. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we don't have, I guess you could say, easier games until like this. Right, because like uh, that's what I'm saying. So like, I, I don't know if I'm wrong or right. You let me know. Like you think, just by Manchester, not even the whole the league, just Manchester schedule. I think it looks like the whole beginning of this season is crucial and the end of it, or going towards the end of it, as opposed to like that one. The middle. Point. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're the tougher teams. Because then you have, I think... They're uh, the tougher teams that are generally the top five, and, top eight And then, teams. like I said, I don't think he should be playing the first couple of games of the FA Cup unless he wants to. Yeah. And then there's another cup, right? Well, they already got knocked out of that other the, cup. That was one of the lower cups. Or what, yeah. Cup. But there's like three cups, isn't there? Yeah. Well, it's the Cabarro. Isn't there a shield? Or is that just well, like that's the like, That's in the beginning. That's just the winners. That's only one game. So it's FA Cup, Corona Cup. Cabarro, and that's it. And then the league. And then the league. So yeah. it's only those? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I thought it was one more. No, it's just those three. The Corano Cup is against all the teams in the in England, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. At the Copa del Rey, that they yeah. play all the like something hey the lower like divisions, yeah. something like that. Nor is it the FA Cup. The FA one is, I think, more open to. I think the to, FA Cup. It, no, no, it's something like that. It, it uh, I think the Cabarro is just within the divisions, like one, two, and three. I think the FA Cup is all the way back down to like whoever it can play. Like it far. it's almost, I guess you could say, uh, like the ML- MLS. Just I don't know if they still have it, but they had like a US Open, which yeah, is like yeah. basically like the semi pro teams can play, like the teams that are like have like no fans and they play like at like regular club fields. <laughs> Those teams, um, I think the FA Cup is that one, but it's something along those lines. But yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Uh, these te- these next games are going to be the tough ones where it's like, yeah, they got to really. They really got to perform with them. Um, but yeah, again, that's what I was just again. That was I wanted. I wanted to say. I think Oli has to just understand his. Uh, I know he's trying to put his tactics in. I know how. Again, I'm sure you're, when you're a coach and you feel. But again, to to have Ronaldo back, I think it's a tough thing that kind of pushes your tactics a little bit to the side to mix into like understanding who is this guy, mm-hmm. and so far look how it's been since he's got here. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it hasn't been a dud. It hasn't been a bust. I don't think it's going to be like that anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I understand about the way uh, Zidane did when he was getting closer to ending at Madrid, where he was he was uh, he was um, resting him, which which I get. But I think the dynamic of the Premier League now it's 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 just greater than it it is ever before. That again, you have to assess where you're at. Like yes, win these first. 10, 12 games that you're going to get into, like like I said, that, that, um, the next, what, the next five you said, the next mm-hmm. six. And then if you can get over those six and you at yeah. least, at least win 90% of them, the rest of that is like, okay, Ronaldo, we're going to have to assess when we play you because Champions League's 
we finished that too. We're in a good, we get the first group of the, now, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just think that's how I, I see it going is because I'm so like obviously passionate about seeing Ronaldo play. And when it's the, the team around him, there's like the stupidest things. It's like, you guys can't be doing this. It's just, yeah. it just makes me like frustrated. It's like, ah, uh, like you guys are so good. Like you guys can't be doing this. Well, welcome to the team. I know. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. That's I'm like, like, what? I'm like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what's wrong with you, dude? Like, yeah, this pressure. Yeah, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just too much. I was like, what if I get caught? <laughs> <laughs> and then what we're starting with before. I'm like, like, what if I get caught? <laughs> It's just a pressure. I can't handle it. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, uh, this is typical, man. I mean, it's normal. <laughs> no, and I felt it because one day, was, one week, it was like, ah. Yeah. The other was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, that's it's, the league. That's what I'm saying. And that's what that's the beauty of, of the Premier League that yeah. no, you're right. every yeah. game is like, you're only, like we've always said, you're only as good as your last game. Yeah. And that's how it is in the Premier League, where it's every other league, it's like, you're going to win four in a row. It's like, hey, they won again. Okay, whatever. And then they lose. It's like, yeah, they lost. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but but you know, it's it's. I mean, look at uh, we could talk about Arsenal. They started the season zero and three, and then they went three in a row. Uh, Spurs went three and zero to start, and now they're zero and three in the last three games. Like it, it's up and down. Yeah, it's a, so in the sense, it's like okay, they made they lost this one. There's the break. Maybe they needed this break. They come back. Let's see the momentum carrying forward and and. Now we can, because I don't think every player, I don't think every player got picked from United to go and play. I mean, De Gea is there, but he's not, he's not playing. So he's resting technically, we say two weeks. Varane is there. Maguire had, M- Maguire's hurt, but now has the rest. Luke Shaw hurt, got the rest. A couple guys that don't get to get picked, get to rest. So a lot of guys get to rest a little bit and recover and then get to come back and be able to, you know, hit the ground running. So again, it's the first, it's, for some, it could be beneficial. For some, it may hurt them. So I think right now it's like the hype and the momentum. Everybody was just, you know, on cloud nine and everything just hit. Now it's like, okay, there's a break. Okay, now everybody should just kind of like come back down to earth. And then, okay, let's see how we go about this next game. If we could get that next game, kind of get it rolling, then it's all right. We're good. We're okay. And then the Champions League game, same thing. Get it rolling. Get a ne- get another win. Then we're good. And by then... If we could get past the tougher teams, which is going to be Liverpool and City, that's where we get. If we could get a win at a Liverpool and City, we're we're solid. Yeah. That's solid. That would be solid two wins right there. So we'll see how it goes. You know, going forward on till till December, basically. Okay. So, yeah. what about uh, the Saudis, Newcastle? Are they going to be legit in the next 8, 10, 10 years? I have no idea. I was listening and reading I a little read bit. all that and I saw it. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I When I saw everything, I thought about to what you said. You can't buy this. You can't, and the way PSG is going. Yeah. And, which I get that part. But then I thought about, well, if they really want to do something, and this guy is the richest guy to buy this team, and if they understand they need to start from the youth up, they could be a top. They they're, they're have, they do it that way. The I, thing I is, think. is that Newcastle does have a history. The problem is it's not an appealing team that's like been up there for players to be like, oh yeah, I want to go to Newcastle. There's kids obviously in this within the city that they you know well, they I mean, that. You were saying that last time with with PSG, but PSG had some players, right? Or no, but I'm know. saying in the sense of like PSG's always been around and always been a they've been a top team, I guess you could say for where they're at and for who they go against. Whereas it's like when has Newcastle ever been in Champions League? PSG's been in Champions League for the past, you know, whatever years. It's 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 a team that's like you really gotta appeal it to a top player to be like yeah I want I, I, yeah. I want to go there obviously I, money's gonna be about, obviously money's gonna be about that and then obviously if they can structure it with youth players and really compete and you know if they're competing and being up there top two top three every year then yeah of course there's well, that's what be, I'm saying I, eventually there'll be players that would want to be like yeah I want to go there think, but it's got to be a really good like structure and it's yeah. really got to be a really good sell Which, for whoever they're trying to get like. 
<laughs> They're already talking about, oh, Newcastle's going to get Holland. Yeah, is Holland really going to want to go yeah. there with with the team that they have? Like, right now, right now they're making it sound like a guitar team, where yeah. like they have all the money in the world. Which yeah. obviously, like you said, it's not appealing, but they can play. They they can buy anybody right now. Yeah. Guitar. But I, what I'm saying is, like, I think I think if this these people, the Saudis, come in and like realize the how they start to to grasp for the future. No, they're not going to get all the best players in the world today or next year, or the year after. What I think it's in the grasp and towards within 10 years where yeah. where you might see a Pepe there where he's getting close to his 30s yeah. or or before, whatever. Like when it gets to that point where it's like we want the best players f- from the future, well, gotta, not the best players now. Well, you got to remember too is that, yes, this person bought this club, but they can pull out at any time when they True. feel like it's this True. isn't going around. Because let's just say, let's say they bought him out right now. But let's say Newcastle does so bad they go down to the second division. Do you know what I mean? It's like this guy can be like, "What did I just invest in?" Or he can, you know, "I'm I'm done." Or he can say, "Okay, I invested. Let's win this year, gain money, and then when we go into next year, we put in the time to put in more players." Because there's some investors that obviously do stuff like that. But if that were to happen, it's like, well, they were bought out. Now the guy's like, "I want to get rid of this team. I don't want. I don't. They're losing. I don't want. I don't want this. My name to this and this and that and da 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 da." So. A lot of that could happen, but we again, this is the team is the team that it is. If they're really going to try to make an impact and stay in the league, uh, it, it they either have to maybe change a coach or in this next transfer market, they got to go get like three good players, right? Like that are good now to literally kind of just jump into the team and just carry this team to at least be decent enough to stay within next year and at least show some type of fight for next year. Because if they're in the bottom half of the table and they don't even go get anybody in this next transfer window, it's like, well, then what the hell is the point of you guys coming in if we didn't even buy anybody in this well, transfer I, window? Well, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. I think I think what this they're gonna they're gonna build a lot, not just the players. Yeah. They're gonna build the stadiums. They're gonna build the surroundings, their staff, the quality of uh, the field. They're gonna build. Yeah, this is this is their it, facility. It, I think I think what they're coming in is they're gonna boost up what. The yeah, it's gonna. Past it, I gonna think do. I think it's gonna be. If they do it right, I think it's going to be similar to what City was. Because City didn't have that guy until a good few years uh, after. You're, you're right. I think that and then, could be, yeah. And then, and then they got they the stadium. Saying, yeah. And then over the time, they got their players. And eventually, they are what they are now. And I think I think if I the be, guys that bought it are in that similar mindset to what they? the guy that bought City... Um, then, yeah. Then I think I would say I would say this is a 10-year project. Yes, I think this is a ten-year project, and if it's, it can go really, really well for them, or at some point they can be like, "Oh, we're gonna back out of this." Um, we're, I'm trying to see. I don't know if they've done they do this over there. I mean, would it be possible to move them? The what? The, the club? They don't really do that over there. I mean, if he has the money. Uh, no. I'm trying to see where they're from. They're from Newcastle. Yeah, England. No, but like specifically Newcastle. That's the city. That's an actual city. Like around where? That's what I'm I think it's look. like around London and is it? Manchester. Let me check. St James Park is. In Newcastle up. North London. Up in Tyne. Up in Tyne. I don't even pronounce that right. Mm. England. Oh, here it is. There's a map. <laughs> yeah, up Tyne. Around, uh, I don't know what's next major Liverpool. No, they're next to Sunderland. Oh, they're way north. They're right under uh, Ireland, or yeah. Oh, okay. So they're away from everyone. So yeah. like, that's what I'm saying. So if, if this guy is like, you know what, we're gonna move this team to London. Nah, I, I I don't think there's ever been a team to do that out there. That's what I'm saying. I don't th- right. They don't do that because the names that. are from the actual yeah. city. So yeah. like Leicester. They'd be the very Leeds, first ones to ever do Liverpool, that. Because I, I, I don't think I've ever heard of a team Cardiff, Southampton. ever do that. That's only out here. Yeah. But anyways, I was wondering if they like if you're talking about appealing. Yeah. Who the fuck wants to go to Newcastle? Yeah. <laughs> Who's up there? Like, that's that's pretty interesting. But I don't know. We'll see what these guys can do. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. Huh? It's cool that they got bought out. 
Yeah, because they didn't want that guy anymore. They were saying the all, all, the, all the fans. The like, oh, they had, yeah, they, I forgot what it was. It was something, but but yeah, because it's like the team wasn't doing anything. They haven't done. They they barely got back in the league like two years ago. I think they were in the second division for a while. Yeah. So yeah. they finally got back in, which is great to see. But they weren't really getting anything. They weren't really improving. And we'll see. Hopefully. Hopefully these guys who come in, yeah, can can really boost them up again and make them the old Newcastle that they were with uh, Alan Shear and all those other guys. They oh had, yeah, that's right. They had good Even, players. Uh, they were competitive. Santiago team. Munoz from oh, the goal movie. There's yeah. an actual yeah. Santiago Munoz yeah. on the team now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know the odds. What are the fucking odds? I know, right? That was funny. That, that was funny. when I heard that, I saw him, like I was like, "What are the fucking odds? Like this is so random right now. Like oh, wow. out, of, out of all Mexicans." This is the guy you get. I know, right? <laughs> you guys couldn't get like anybody from Chivas. <laughs> Man, that was hilarious. So, yeah, was it? Yeah, we good. I, I think we're good. I mean, a lot has kind of gone on, but I think we covered a good amount of it. I don't think we have time for the nominees. Oh no, we'll do that on the next one. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's thirty of them. I There's don't know. a lot. Of I them. don't know why. Well, they vote. 30. They do 30. And then, and but then for they, what? None of you guys come close. Give me the top five. At the, at the, just top five, at least. No. There's uh, no reason for 30. The only, the, the like only, if you're voting. The only three I'm going to see that I feel like they're going to be the top three is going to be Lewandowski, Ronaldo, and Messi. Uh, that's fine. But if you're a coach or if you're someone to, to, to actually vote on this, would you care to see all 30? Or just give me the 10. Give me 10. At least 10, well, right? I don't know. Again, I don't know what they go off of. I don't know if it, I don't know I, what they go off of. They're just nominated. Know. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know where the nominations come from. That's yeah, the I, thing. So if the nominations come off, I don't know. Let's say that like every league, then yeah, every league have, obviously has, I guess, a chance to put in a, a name whether they decide to or not. It so like put it like, this way, it could. So I, I guess I'll give you this example of how we do it at the high school. When we do an MVP vote, we all go around the table. If you want to put somebody in, you put them in. If you don't, you don't have to. You just won't. You just won't have a player in for the nomination. So it, it seems like with 30 players or whatever, it seems because there's names on there of players I've never even heard of. I was like, who the hell is this guy? So I, I feel like every league or every team, I don't know, gets an email and saying, you know, here's the the um, the form to put it to nominate an MVP or whatever for Ballon or no, an MVP, nominate a Ballon d'Or player. And it's like, oh, okay. And then some will be like, yeah, you know, I want to nominate that. But then others like, oh, we got nobody. There's no reason. What are you trying to say? Uh- I just feel like they they go off of like that. Like I feel like all these leagues get like an email and say, "Hey, look, who are you gonna nominate?" And some like I don't nominate anybody. Some like, "Oh, I nominate this guy." Whatever, you know. And I feel like that's what what happens, and that's why we get thirty some damn players. And then once the once those nominations go in, now everybody votes. Everybody votes, obviously, for whatever. I don't know how. Or I think they do. I, from what I remember, I heard they do like two forms of voting. They do like with captains and coaches, and then they do the the, the media, the media votes, something yeah. like that. So eventually, they they dwindle it down to the top ten, and then the top ten comes down to the top three. So I think they go about rounds of voting. So I think the first one, which these thirty, they're gonna say, okay, everybody vote, mm. and the and the the top fifteen make it to the next round of voting, and then it's like, okay, everybody can vote again now. Now these are your, who you get to vote for. And it's like, okay, now, I don't know, let's say somebody vote did, let's say somebody put one vote for, let's just say, Messi, and he didn't make that next round. So the next time they vote, it's like, okay, now this vote, I'm going to put it for whoever. And now that guy already had, like, 20 votes. My extra one gives him a 21, whatever. And kind of, I feel like it just kind of goes out eventually till you get down to the to the bottom three. Because we, we'll, they start with 30, and then we see it go down to, like, 10, and then we see it down go to, like, 5, and then eventually goes down to 3. Yeah. And, then, and then we see later on... When they show like the top 10, they show everybody that was voted how many votes everybody got. And you'll see like the 9, 8, 10th player got like one vote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so I think it's, that's just how they do it because it's all the leagues and the media, whatever. And then right here is where they finally break it down with the captains, the coaches, and the media. So they're basically showing the process that we don't really need to see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like basically. We don't need to see all these guys. It's basically. Just, just let them just know when it's 10. Yeah. Right? Basically. But they got to do it. I think that's just no, how. I know they, they got to do yeah. it. But it's like we don't yeah. need to see all No, yeah, I get it. I, I think that's just what it is. So, but we'll see who who they go about. But we, right. we could talk about that one next time. So, other than that, 
Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's. We can end it on that note. We just got the uh, game on Sunday, the final, yeah. the League's Na- Nations League. Yeah. Qualifiers, and then one more week of qualifiers, and then back to leagues. Yeah. All righty. Well, I guess we're out. Yeah. Uh, please keep watching. Yeah. Click the subscribe button if you guys haven't. Yeah. Follow us, share us, <laughs> comment at us. Yeah. Oh, jazz. Do some comments. I feel like doing some questions from people. Whatever. I mean, whatever you guys feel, let us know. I feel like people need to like engage, engage a little bit more. We will. I haven't said anything, but we're going to have a giveaway. Not Ooh. sure what yet. Hopefully sooner the better. At, around the time we get the this video loaded, which maybe you'll just have it soon. But we'll have some goodies. I'm going to figure right. out some soccer stuff or something to give away. Yeah, that'd be cool. And we'll get you guys all involved. Again, appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.